So I'm still scared about the Tesla robots. Mm-hmm. Mm. But just thinking about my life and how things can go on a day-to-day basis, I think I could use a clone. What do you mean? Okay, I have questions. So yeah. is the clone, like, does everyone know that you're a clone or you wouldn't tell anybody that you have a clone? So you're just mm. acting like you're everywhere all at once. These are very good questions. Um, Follow-up questions, you know what I'm I would say people don't know that it's a clone just so no one feels left out. So they, everyone thinks that it's the real Alex. Yeah. Like, think okay. about it. Where would you guys send your clone to throughout the day? How many times a year <sighs> yeah. would you send your clone here is what I want to know. <laughs> never. No, no, no. Okay, so what is never a clone? Because okay, I what need the it? real you. What yeah, is no, a no, clone? No, 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 no. Never with the podcast. I'm still confused. What does the yeah. clone mean? Like, if he sends the fake, like, Alex number two, if yeah. he sends it to the um, pod, <laughs> right. is he as funny as you? Nah, see, that's Okay, so... It's not even your clone clone. He just looks like you. But he doesn't have your soul. Like, what are the deficiencies in your clone? I don't want there to be any deficiencies. Think about it like this, Well, right? then that's... No, I don't like that. Why not? Because then you're going to trick me. But it's a clone. Like, it's supposed to be a carbon copy of that person. I need your clone to yeah. not be so smooth. Nah. So if you give it away. So like, then I know this is not nah. really... Like, it needs a deficiency. It can't just Why? be like a perfect wouldn't one-to-one match. Wouldn't y'all want things to go as normal? I want you here. Nah, because then no, no, it, like no, an see, identifier. That way we know who is the real you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let me be Give more me clear. a deficiency. Does it stink? No, nah, I could never stink. Come on, man. Look at me. <laughs> it, it's, the clone is not the clone is not you. It needs a, a deficiency. No, but it represents him. You, you know what? Yeah, you, you know go. what it is? There you go. Your clone occasionally yeah. leaves his glasses at home. No. That's not that bad. That's, that's not, not a bad. No, no, no. You no, can get no. that off. I could get it off. But see, let me tell y'all what I think about it. I mean, I want to go and do the things I want to do, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say we have the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we work nine to five. So <laughs> nine to five pod. I would send the, the clone to work <laughs> <laughs> and just come to the studio, prep for the uh-huh. day, think about topics, uh-huh. things of that nature, or just something you agreed to do with a friend mm-hmm. and you get tired all of a sudden, mm-hmm. and go send that clone out there. Why don't you go over there with Kevin? Okay. That is what I need. Imagine how scary it would be if yes. like we're potting like normal on a Tuesday night and then midway through the pod, me and Savon realize like, yo, my God, this is the clone. <laughs> is that the clone? That the clone? I just I have chills right now. <laughs> that would be so scary. But that's what I'm saying. Like if we're going to be like realistic, it needs to have some type of deficiency. But being a clone would be to be a carbon copy. That's not realistic. Like imagine me without my impulse. You're going to know. Wait, hold up. This nigga's patient this week. He's too, but no. too calm. Oh, wait, he, he's understanding? Oh, he doesn't need things, like, on demand? Wow, who is this guy? Stop that. He's on. Un- you're understanding. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> See, I, I don't want to change nobody, though. I just want to send someone out to do tasks and duties when I'm tired. Because I don't want my you know clone I mean? to replace me. Like, I, I need my clone to just have a, some type of deficiency. Damn, so you want your clone my to be clone like My clone writes a, with my left hand instead of my right. Like, it needs to be something where somebody who really knows me can yeah. be like, Can I identify hmm, it? Something is off. That's a fraternal twin, and that's not a clone. A clone is literally the exact same shit as you. I don't you. like it. You don't want no clone. You're too progressive. <laughs> I'm crying. So you don't want a clone? You wouldn't no. send a clone I would, out? I would never want a clone. Really? Never, never. Because my whole life philosophy... Damn. Is I'm I'm a very happy person because yeah. I'm like this is my life. No one can take it away. There's only one of me. Like no one can ever be me. Like that is why I'm very secure in my life. So if there was a, literally a clone, I'd be like everything I believe in is gone. Y'all would get jealous of the clone? Not it, jealous, but it's I like would. there's only one me. Like <laughs> you get jealous of the clone? I'll be hating on me. If there's one person to hate on, like I'm gonna hate on my clone. Like we start going after the same women, and he's actually getting the women that I want. But it's you. I'm hot. No, but you could be head clone. I don't think ca- about it like this. They don't know. I that. think about oh, superheroes. They go, they go rogue. Yeah, I think about superheroes, right? Like certain superheroes when they have that clone ability in their arsenal, like they're able to tell the clones, "You do this, you do that." But hey, if you go find a million dollars. <laughs> You snap right back into me, nigga. Like, hey. Like it's ours. Yeah, this is ours. You got to be the head clone. We would be the head clones of the clones. Wait, but then your clone doesn't have a mind of his own. No, it has my mind. I'm just a little bit more superior. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It needs some you. type of deficiency. Okay, it okay. can't just okay. be you. It, it, it has to the, have a deficiency. It has to be an identifier that says, hey, this is Alex, but it's not really Alex. Nah. Whether it be how, how, how much of a leader you are. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's not into music the way that you're into music. Oh, no, like, I got it. it has to I be something. I got it. So Alex the clone, the way we identify him is 
the Alex number two actually eats in front of people. Oh, yeah. So if you see him at that bad, but it's it's distinguishable. Yeah, no, no funny shit. You need something. What? That's whack. I don't want to do that. I know you. Yeah, but it's you not- would send him to us. No, I wouldn't. Once in a you while, you don't know me. <laughs> Once in a while, if you know me, there's no way I would send a clone to y'all. I love y'all. Yeah, I know you. You would rather think... be the real Alex in front of us and yes. then send the clone to do something yeah, else. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like when I'm tired, and I'm busy. I got shit going on. Okay, y'all go do the shit I really don't want to do. The podcast ain't on that list. I feel that. Yeah. I like, would use it to make more money. That way I could be in two different places at once. Love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you agree to do an event here, but you can't do it here because you have obligations and things you care about. Yep, yeah, yep. go send that clone out. Ooh, I give me anxiety because if I send my clone to do the yeah. event, I don't know she's doing a good job. Mm, like, but it's, a clone. But you. it's you. Yeah, but they're no, you. No, but that, there's no one. There's no me. <laughs> I just don't understand how someone can be yeah. me. I don't know, whatever. Well, That's why I would never want a twin. Folks, like, girl, no. <laughs> why, are there, why are there two of us? Like, what the fuck? Leave it in the comments. Let me know if you guys could use a clone in your lives, if it's busy, if it's hectic, etc. Or if y'all like Savon and Reggie, and there can't be no clone. It's a one on one. I cannot lie to you. Yeah. It is always tough when we have to come in here, look at the cameras, look at each other. Yeah. And realize there are people who hate on Reggie. Now, wait, wait, this wait. doesn't bring me any joy to highlight. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh oh. But I do have to acknowledge it. Damn, damn. Last week, we lost some folks. We did? We lost some people. Adios. Last... Uh, <laughs> Toodles. <laughs> Bye. It was last, one person. Technically. Last week, <laughs> we lost some folks. Y'all okay. And so I'm going to read this because I want to know how y'all feel in real time. We didn't really talk about it. Um, mm. Whenever you give strong opinions, whenever you feel, however you feel, yeah. people are going to agree, people are going to not, people are going to leave, people are going to stay, people are going to like go super hard for you, or they're just not. This one guy, particular, hey man, he says, long time listener, however, when Shorty called America racist for voting for Trump, you lost a listener. Shorty. I'm sure you guys will roll your eyes and say thank you for removing yourself, but I just wanted to let you know <laughs> it's been real. I'm, I'm playing, out. I'm playing my sad violin right now. <laughs> that little violin that you play I'm on your very... fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little hymn for your ass. That's how one of our listeners, former listeners, felt oh, after last week's episode. Shucks. How do you guys feel? Like Okay, okay, like okay. Clone? First, wait, what'd you say? So you go first. Your <laughs> no, clone? I just feel like my clone is saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> all the same. Alex. <laughs> so it's like, okay, first of all, yeah. I feel like if um, <laughs> don't do this. Nah, keep going, cause No, because this doesn't match say, what I'm about to say. I know, but it does match like we saying goodbye. Like, see y'all later. <laughs> like, yeah. Peace out. Come back, yeah. join us. Because yeah. it's like, I feel like the the quote unquote strong opinion that I gave was that America is racist, and I'm like is it not? Is it, do we not know this? Do you guys not remember shit. 2020? Yeah, it's, the it's BLM shown movement. That. Like, did you not live through the same America that we are living through? Like, it's actually not that bad now. Back in the day. And respectfully, bro, like, if you really felt the way, say it with your chest. You ain't go to Shorty. Her name is Reggie. Mm. Shit is so weird. Like, why you ain't just tell her how you really felt? And just to defend myself a little bit, I'm sorry, but every week people have problems with what you guys say. And they like complain in the comments. This is my one time. Like, Damn. It's fine. I use my one card. You don't feel complaining? bad like, like chasing our listeners off? No. Like, nah. in- impacting our business? Never. If, they're, if they <laughs> don't think like that America is racist, then clearly they are living with, what's, what's it called? Delusion. Delusion. So Delulu. I mean, we don't need, guys, I, I didn't call you racist. So the fact that you felt attacked like by that. Yeah. I don't know. His name is being American. You're gonna stop hating me because I really, really don't, don't feel the way it was felt about you. That's how he feels about us. I didn't know, like, I didn't know. Didn't, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I will say. You gotta go. I will I'm say, sorry. We gotta say goodbye to you. You can't live in a world where you're only appeased by, like, someone else's opinion of uh, someone else's different opinion is making you that upset. Mm-hmm. Right? Also, like, <laughs> yo, I want people to listen to me if they don't agree me agree with me or if they do. But also, it's like, the thing is, like, to the man, I don't even know, like, who said that, but, like, I didn't call that person racist. I said, America's racist, so I knew Kamala winning would be very hard. That's what I, exactly, like, verbatim what I said. So, like, if he was offended, I'm like, it's like the, a quote that I um recently found, no, not, uh like, revisited. I think Idris Elba said this. He said, um... 
people really hated like the Me Too movement. Oh my God. And he was like, if you're a man with nothing to hide, why would I hate the Me Too movement? Like, mm-hmm. I don't care. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. So people who aren't racist heard what I said and they didn't think anything of it. They're it like, yeah, cool. cool, whatever. Like, it just was cool. Yeah. And if you know the history of the country, then you know, like, racism is embedded he, in the DNA he knows of this country. Yeah. He knows that. But yeah. He's being dramatic. It's kind of, it's, it's why. <laughs> and I think he felt Salute. that he was hurting us by telling us he wasn't going to support and yeah. listen to us. But it's like, that just says more about you than it does about us. That'd be me on the customer service line when nothing, something not going my way. You about to lose a really valued customer. <laughs> and, they then, be, and they're like, we don't give a fuck. They don't be giving a fuck. <laughs> you be telling that to at and yeah. like, hey, uh. They don't, they don't give a flying fuck at T-Mobile. Uh, yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm so sorry to my co-host that I did that, that I, you know. Got, I can't cost eat. us a listener. I, I can't can't so eat. sorry, guys. I can't eat because like <laughs> we, we lost that one listener. I'm lost so that one sorry. Guy. Get you How are we gonna pay man. the bills for the studio next week? I don't week? know. I'm so sorry. I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll pay about one of you fine listeners signing up to our membership program. At Here we go. Even no <laughs> studios in the building. We've been teasing it for a while. Um, as you all know, this is our home. We want to make it your home. Need to know studios.com in the bio and all of the links, descriptions, all of that good stuff. Uh, we do offer some membership programs for any creators in the tri state area, NYC, yeah. all of those things. So, our pitching point, and I'm going to get really, really kind of nerdy real quick. So, stay with me. We understand the importance of consistency when it comes to creating content, when it comes to podcasting, all of those things. um, Being able to afford it is really important. And so us taking over the studio, knowing that, keeping that in mind, we tried to make the most affordable prices, um, you know, comparing it to just the market and what it takes. We want people in here as often as possible, as much as possible Mm -hmm. for as low as possible. That works for you and also allows us to continue to run this thing at the level and the quality that you need. And we feel like you want, right? Right. A lot of people look at our setup and be like, hey, we want this to kind of look and feel like that. And so, yeah, that's what we want to provide. Need to know studios.com. Become a member. I do think it is the most efficient way to kind of just tap in and do that. Yeah. And and yeah, I can't wait to see all y'all. Yeah. Book a session. Tell a friend to tell a friend that the need to know studios is up and running mm-hmm. and we are ready and ex- uh, excited elated all the words all For the sure. ease to see y'all yeah we got a ton of things you could come in here video space obviously podcast and recording we got some consultations with mandy b myself if you guys want to consult Ooh. and Hello. get some real insider trader information we can do that too uh but yeah we we, we finally we did this yeah. right before thanksgiving i'm very thankful and i know we're going to talk about the things that we're thankful for right. but this studio um the progress that we've had over the year we're gonna we're gonna get emotional one day not today yeah but End of year type I love shit. Getting I'm, I'm really grateful that we're able to do this and kind of pour back into the people who have uh, you know committed to us yeah um and yeah need to know studios.com make sure y'all go check that out yeah excited man for sure for sure and they know it's our home base so you guys might literally might run into us you just might i'm not yeah. even joking nah for real i can't wait for y'all to pop into alex for real no no oh my goodness. no 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 i can't wait till y'all see save on that's gonna be the one <laughs> like Spark. That's gonna be the one. Yeah. Cause you always trying to throw me <laughs> up to like some little Yo, go to Alex DM. Yes. Yo, see, no, no. Yeah. I cannot wait for y'all to meet Safe Hard. Yeah, man. I can't <laughs> wait. So make sure y'all popping over there. And while we're doing some more promo, uh, oh. Patreon.com, Need to Know Podcast. We are giving you extra episodes each and every week. We have mm-hmm. not missed a, a week of an additional episode, which drop every single Monday. So if y'all want more of us, if the Thursday, Wednesday drops aren't enough, please make sure y'all tap in over there. Yeah. That link is also in the descriptions. Um, I'm going to, you know, we we also give y'all previews. I don't know if y'all give a fuck about those, but tap into the previews. I'm going to oh, actually do a live preview now. Alex and Reggie, I told y'all this in private. Well, not really private. It was on Patreon. But mm-hmm. it's something that we didn't really get to talk about on the podcast. But it is something that I did want to mention last week when I spoke about the, not the Special Olympics. What I call it? Yeah. I don't know what you the call it. Olympics. The Cooked Olympics. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this thing is crazy. No, I knew it was Olympics. <laughs> Last week, we talked about the Cooked Olympics. This week on Patreon, we talked about somebody who I feel should be in the forefront of the Cooked Olympics, and that's mm-hmm. Kodak Black. Yeah. Kodak Black is going to die. You got to stop saying why that. You, why if, are you but, repeating Stop this? wishing death. I'm not, no, no. See, don't do that. You, you, know, you know I'm not wishing death. But you got to say that. You, you think I'm wishing. You, I didn't say I want Kodak. I didn't say He's that. like predicting. I'm saying, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the hard truth that other people just aren't saying. 
Wait. Y'all saw him on Kai Sinai's stream. We yeah. did, we did. And we did talk about this extensively on Patreon, so we don't have to revisit it again today. But if he doesn't get help, if people don't stop exploiting him, um, yeah, we've seen this story before. So that's another reason why I don't feel guilty saying what I'm saying. Like, we've seen the Juice World, rest in peace. We've seen the rich homie Quans, rest in peace. Like, we, we've seen it. So for me to say something like he's going to die if he continues to abuse drugs in the way that he's doing, like he did a trick with a Percocet. He popped it like a Scooby <laughs> yeah, snack. That was, that was a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he threw it up in the air like it was a gummy bear and caught it with his, like, you know how often you got to do that? You got to do it frequently to feel that comfortable. And for you that. to do that on the biggest live streamer. Oh, actually, uh, shout out to Kai. I think today he was announced to be the biggest streamer of all time. Hey, shout I out to him. Eclipsed yeah, yeah, yeah. the most amount of subs. Or yeah. 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 Well, I thought he was already that. No? I think he had the record before. Oh. And then this time, like, I think it was like 300,000, a little bit over 300,000. So he surpassed that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, for, for Kodak Black to pop Percocets in that way. On the largest Poor platform Kyle. that Kyle we got, so and it's like, like, come on, dog. Like, what are we talking about? Like, he 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 needs some help. Yeah. Unless we kind of know how this story is gonna write itself. Yeah, he needs some help. But um, I just briefly spoke about this on Patreon as well. It's tough when you're an artist and you don't have a proper backing behind you. You might just have homeboy management. Homeboy management won't get paid. <laughs> Home, home, they should be more invested. Homeboy management should be more invested in be. my health and my well-being mm-hmm. than the label. The, th- the thing is, though, should be, but they've never been taught um, like a proper way to do things. Like they repeat the same thing that they've been doing. I'm not gonna let you get that off. What do you mean? No, you don't got you don't let, gotta let me do nothing. What you mean? Yeah, I'm you just should, giving perspective. You shouldn't yeah. have to be taught how to care for your friend. You shouldn't be. That is a, that I mean, is a but fact. If that's so, all they know, like that environment, and, and they've like, never seen any sort of money like that. Be, Unless if it was their friend, right? So in their mind, they're like, damn, man. They probably still look up to Yak. And to your point, if you love somebody, you should show up for them and not want to see them crash out or die. I don't think anything of what you're saying is incorrect. What I'm saying is you might just need some people who are more abreast on these situations and how to deal with them, right? A lot of We know enablers. We know enablers on every sort of level, right? It's not just street niggas. We just know people who know, yo, this the bread ticket. He the bread winner. And this is how we've been surviving. So we don't know what to do. But when you get a third party person, you can just inject into there who's privy, mm-hmm. who still appreciates, loves that person, but knows the proper steps on how to go about things for the artist. You might see a change, but nine times out of 10 homeboy management, bro, they just showing up, unfortunately, and just yeah. repeating. I hope we see a change. Um, yeah. Again, we, we kind of got really deep on that topic. So, again, join us on Patreon. Yeah. Uh, new episodes each and every week. With that being said, I go by the name Savon here on the Need to Know podcast. What you need to know, when you need to know on the Need to Know podcast. S-A-V-O-N. You feel what I'm saying? And the N is for numb. Uh-oh. Because, damn it, I feel nothing. What? I've become so numb, I can't feel uh, uh, you. There. Sing that shit, right? That's how I feel. <laughs> what got you so numb? Every, it's cold out. The, day, the days are just like blurred together. <laughs> the weeks are just like blurred together. How are you I feeling? feel you. How are you feeling? I feel you. Uh, are you trying to tell us that? Like, how are you feeling? I feel them today. I feel like I don't have enough. I feel like I need a clone. You see? Oh, that's you see? why. But that's why I feel like you that's why crazy. Alex introduced that topic because he that was his point. But do you yeah. really? How are you feeling? I feel like I don't know how to. I don't feel. I know, and that's what being numb is. Like you're not. I don't feel anything. I'm just going through the motions. I'm just going through motions. I'm programmed. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to unprogram myself. I'm on autopilot. But autopilot is also operating at a really high level. Yeah. Right. It's not just autopilot when I'm doing 45 on the highway. Mm -hmm. Like it's (laughs) autopilot on 98, Mm -hmm. and I just got to keep. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I feel numb. S A V O and the N is for numb today. Yeah. That concerns me, but like, you no, know, I'm in a good way or a bad way. Well, like, do you feel like overwhelmed or there's too much to do, not enough time? That's exactly what it is. Okay. Too much to do, not enough time. <laughs> you know, putting yourself last always, always, mm-hmm. always putting everything and everybody before you. It sounds very cliche. No, and it's the truth. No, I've been I mean, saying that's this. That's how like, you feel. Like, tell us. My, truth. My, my goal for 2025 mm-hmm. is to detangle some of the things in my life. Mm-hmm. right yeah like i put a lot on my plate and i feel like i can manage it mm-hmm. but now i'm just managing it and mm-hmm. i'm not excelling i feel right. like right and it's crazy to say that when we just sold out a mixer had joe butt in there i know charlamagne shout us out kaisa and i said what up and we bought a studio right it's so crazy <laughs> to say holy shit i don't feel like i'm progressing yeah but mm-hmm. i'm also shifting my perspective where the accomplishments that i have professionally isn't what fuels me you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. like 
I need to be able, like I'm 30, God damn it. I've been, that's, this is the theme of my life. I'm 30. I need mm-hmm. a family. Oh, you know what I'm saying? One of these saying. days. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. On Patreon, we we actually talked about this. We have really great conversations on Patreon, guys. But it's like, facts, facts. at some point, I feel like we're so career oriented. Mm-hmm. All three of all four of us, peer included. Like, yes. But at some point, you're like, wait, what really fulfills me? You know what I'm saying? No, like, for so sure. That's, that's why. That's why I'm like. I was talking about somebody who he waited till he was like 34 to realize this, but I'm like, guys, let's let's prioritize it now. Yeah. When you, you turn know? 30, it just hits you different. And yeah. it's not like, oh, I, I need to be irresponsible. Right. It's like, no, I need to like put the things in place to make sure I get to where I need to go to, you know, enter that phase. Especially mm-hmm. when you're so used to hustling, mm-hmm. moving around, mm-hmm. shaking and moving, just making it work. Mm-hmm. I completely feel you. And taking Isn't care of a lot of people. Yeah. Isn't I, it crazy how oh no, go ahead, Alex. No, I was also gonna say I relate to I've been like that for years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy how like <laughs> When when things are happening for you professionally and like yeah. things are happening well and like you know you're you're going on doing all these endeavors and they're excelling, you know personally it could be the complete opposite. Like isn't I find it that most of the some people that I know and just that I'm around they kind of have that similar experience. So the fact that like you know you've been doing all these, all these great things, everyone, I'm actually not surprised that you know you kind of feel this way. Yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. a great way to put it. Yeah. So great I gotta put me first. <laughs> I really, you know what the I queen, really, you know what the ladies. I gotta put, put me first. Put me That's first. all it is. I gotta put me first next. I year. really support that. Do it. Yeah. Do it. If other areas have to have to suffer, oh, it's That's worth so it to it. put yourself first. Yeah, Take important. care of yourself first. You just find out too late sometimes. <laughs> well, that was that was his intro. Uh, let's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was deep. I feel like I kind of nah, nah, I, like I, I loved it. Yo, the end is gonna fuck y'all up in twenty twenty five. The end yeah. is not just gonna be. What? Say what you can't just. He really was like, and the end is for no. numb. Yeah, I'm gonna ask how you're doing because we we nah, not here yeah. to play. I tried to play me on the intro a few weeks ago, what? and that hurt me. I said I ain't bring enough energy on the end. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm, I'm bringing the bring energy. I'm bringing the emotions. Yeah. I'm bringing the substance. I'm bringing the depth. All that, all the that. end is about to really get in y'all bag in y'all head every single week <laughs> from now just, on. But you said, "I'm numb," and of I'm course, numb. of course, I'm concerned. Uh, bro, like, the, the, the end is really for like. <sighs> I'm huh. telling you, this shit is crazy. You talking, man? Woo. All right, what's up, y'all? It's your boy A, as always, the Paco Rabone Poppy. Never alone, always on the posse. <laughs> Hello, guys. It's me, Reggie. I feel very great to be here this week. I feel a lot better than last week. Thanks hey, for the support. And um, if you are racist, please don't follow us. And <laughs> I'm going to please. pass it off to... And if you're not racist, you wouldn't be offended that I said that. Anyway, so I'm passing it off to Pierre, the man with the plan behind the cam. Hey. Yo, what's up? Hey, I'm back this week. Last week, we had a little uh, technical difficulties, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. We here. I was tight. I was like, damn, I want to join in. But no, we know. I can see you through the week. window like... <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, what's up? Welcome back, man. What Welcome was this back. week like for you guys? What are we talking um, about? Honestly, my playlist was playing, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Me and Alex, <laughs> this shit really just was in, in, in my bag for real. Like, <sighs> y'all ever hear something that just be like, God damn. Put you in that mode? Like, you forget when it hit. <laughs> what you mean? You forget, like, <laughs> I don't like hearing songs and thinking of other men. But I mean, I, I heard this and I'm like, yo, hey. What, why you got to think about me on this song? I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? I thought about us. Us? No. No. Well, no it's a good song. It's a great it's song. It's a good song. But you hear the words? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I think he just really resonated with the message, but he wants to blame it on you. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Nah, man. It's, like, just, like, it's, it's just a good song, man. <laughs> It's just a good song, man. You're supposed to think about the women you're not trying to wrong when you hear that nah, song. Nah, I'm busting with you. I'm busting with you. That shit just came <gasps> on and I wrote it on my content list. Like, yo, let me let me catch Alex off guard. <laughs> yo, niggas love doing yeah, that. Yeah, like, why that. drag me into it? Everybody right. likes doing it, yo. For sure, for sure. Um, we here, though. What up, yeah, y'all? There's, there's a few things to get into. Just to be transparent with y'all, this <clears throat> is a Monday. We are dropping. Yeah. We're recording on a Monday. Uh, normally, we record on Tuesdays. Last week, it was Wednesday. We're trying to be flexible and make sure we give y'all an episode each and every week mm-hmm. this week we are actually again shout out to y'all and shout out to the academy of the signal awards hey. uh, the ceremony is on the night that we typically record so we had to do it today what happened why are you laughing? the academy of the signal awards i like that the big academy nah, big big a <laughs> oh yeah we got we a. got a little a little nice little dinner to, or whatever what, what do you what do you want to call it like a, a party a little show a little networking a little vibe yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying award dinner you know show face you think we're gonna see shannon sharp in there <gasps> 
Nah. He was at the last award ceremony. That'd be fun. He was there. Was it but last? They, but he won. So, oh. you know what? This is the second time I went up against Big Shay Shay. Oh, shit. You a legend, man. I lost the first time now. One and one. He cooked me. One and one. I'm one and one against Shannon Sharp. Hey. <laughs> I'm one and one against Shannon one Sharp. One But yeah, um, so we all record on a Monday. If things happen um, tomorrow or today, whatever, that's why we didn't talk about it. But yeah. there are a few things that we can't talk about, like the Grammys. Mm, mm, hmm. mm. The Grammy nominees happened last week. Yes. Um, as always, there are snubs. There are surprises. There are people who do not deserve being listed. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, every year. Okay. That always happens. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't know. This year, I looked through the list. I was like, wow. Like, I feel like I was kind of, not that I thought that this year was a bad music year, mm-hmm. but after seeing the list, I was like, wow, this was actually like a great music year. There was a lot of strong contenders. Who, it was. Who led Reggie? Um, Beyonce has 11 nominations. And aside from her leading the nominations this year, well, January 2025 Grammys, she now is the most nominated artist of all time with 99. Wow. Which is pretty crazy. That's amazing. Clap it up. Okay. And she has the most Grammy wins of all time. Oh, salute. Clap it up. God damn. So the card is happy this year, huh? Yes. So so we're not going to get a speech from them this year? We good? Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know because if they don't win, <laughs> yeah, because because when Jay Z did that speech about her, um, she was like heavily nominated that year too. But he was just like, "Yo, I think he was like, you guys never give her the big award that really matters." Got which is know. which is usually like album of the year uh, or like song, song of the year, year, record of the year. They always Got give her you. like a niche, a more niche like uh Category. genre. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like when our industry le- leaders like start bitching. Nah, for real. Cause Cause show the real you. Yeah. I was about to say, like, show I, real it's you relatable. Know. I get it. Like, it's relatable with Jay Z's. Like, nah, bro, this ain't right. <laughs> this is not right. This so, is injustice <laughs> to my wife, who is the greatest of all time, to never get this. A great like, husband. I, I respect that. A great husband. Well, I guess they listened to Jay Z this year because, in the category of record of the year, what the fuck? They got the beat of it. <laughs> Wait, what, wait, are we looking at the, the list Be- from 2024? Yeah, the one you 1983. said. 1983. Yo, the Beatles. Oh, wait, now, when were the, Be- the Beatles? The Beatles, now and then. It's record of the year I'm reading, guys. Okay. Uh, Beyonce, Texas Hold'em. So she received a nomination. Sabrina Carpenter, Espresso. Charlie XCX, mm, 360. Who is this? Who is that? Pop star. Okay. No, I'm, I'm not being funny. I was no, being no, serious. No, yeah, no, I know. I was being serious. Trust me, I know. Billie Eilish, Birds of a Feather, Pop. Of course, Kendrick Lamar, not like us. Uh, Chappelle, Roan, good luck, babe. And uh, Taylor Swift and Post Malone with Fortnite. Okay. Yeah, that's, All right. that's record. Familiar yeah. names, new names. Yeah. Um, what I will say, because I'm going to speak to the things that I know. Right. What I do know is Andre 3000 should not be nominated for shit. <laughs> that's my dog. That's what yeah. I do know. Yeah. Unless they have like Best <laughs> Instrumental Grammy. But... The fact that he has a nomination in what's the category that yeah, he's album nominated of the year. in? Album of the year. Andre yeah. 3000 at New Blunt. Uh, Beyonce's Cowboy Carter, Sabrina Carpenter, Charlie XCX, Jacob Collier, uh, Billie Eilish, Chappelle Roman, and Taylor Swift. Also, the Beatles re recorded that album. Uh, How? And, I, and they use AI. So that's why it's getting the Grammy. We, we are done. We got dead niggas. Or not who, allowed, who allowed this? We are done, y'all. I don't know if. <laughs> Nah. It's your fault. You want the clones. I do. And now they done clone their voice. Clones and they gr- Beatles. I don't got no clone of the Beatles. Shout out to Paul McCartney, though. If I was Paul, I would have just went in there and just tried to copy all my dead homies' voices in there. <laughs> my fault, y'all. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right. What year were the Beatles popping? I think it was like the It had 60s. to be like 60s. 60s? Okay. Yeah, it had 60s. to be. Yeah. My parents wasn't even born. Wasn't even a thought. That's crazy. But, yeah. yeah. Andre 3000, right. um, he was somebody who I was referring to when I was like, yeah, I don't know if he really deserved that. Because I think he just, he made a passion project and that's fine and mm-hmm. it's cool and I'm sure it resonated with some people, but it was, it's not, nah, bro. Nah. There's yeah. a lot of artists who work really hard to yeah. get that look, right? He has actually said, I'm retiring. <laughs> like he retired and they like, nah, come back to the game. <laughs> Like, they're not allowing him to retire <gasps> because anything he farts on is like, oh, we're going to praise it. And I wasn't really feeling that. Yeah, I think we're all thinking the same thing. We're all thinking like, <laughs> hmm. you know, we all love Andre 3000. He's literally a genius. But why is this album nominated? Hey, you know? all, with all due respect, I love 3K. That is my guy. He actually just put out a song recently and he put like a hidden verse in there. I, I don't know what he's saying. I can't decipher it. Anyway, I say all that to say... um, 
Yeah, I'm with Savon on this one. <laughs> nah, nah, he ain't. This is not supposed to be. Because you want to know what it is? <laughs> no, well, honestly. Yeah. Because I heard him admit that he don't even know the notes he's playing. He just. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm, I'm serious. Go look it up. Ain't that crazy? Yeah, I remember crazy. when just, y'all, did. did y'all have to take recorder class? I, yeah. I remember the recorder. Y'all remember the I recorder? I played the flute too. I remember the yeah. recorder. And you had wait, you just you what? I, I played the flute too. They Proudly? said I thought yeah. it was the broke flute. Nah, I, they, know they said, I played the flute too in band. But here, this this is how they got I was, me. <laughs> I don't like the undertones of that. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was crazy. But they basically said if you could blow on the top of a, oh uh, shit on on top of a bottle and it makes the sound, then you could play the flute. How you did that though? I don't have a bottle. I'd show you, but I don't have a bottle. Yet. We got something in the studio. I just I want to see like how you was able to get that role you are, in your life. You are an interesting man, Savon. <laughs> yeah, you want to see Pierre perform, man? Huh? Nah, but he did. I just want to know, like, you want to see? How did how did you like? What the like? I used to hate my recorder because <laughs> my shit always had so much spit in there. Ew. Yeah. Ugh. Sloppy. That's nasty. I wasn't playing correctly, right? Nah. Ugh. I don't, I don't think I knew you, it wasn't for me. Your tongue motion wasn't given. Nah. <laughs> it didn't it done caught up now. <laughs> Pause on the play. It, You're not it, supposed to use your tongue on the <laughs> it's playing the fuck say, man? I don't want to listen to the human shit. Know. You're not know. licking your recorder? <laughs> That's what it sounded like Andre 3000 was doing. <laughs> oh, he, he got the bougie recorder. Yo, and nah. he just went in the studio, and like you said, he just was getting it off. It was a passion project. I don't think it should be here personally, but I know there's mad other people that we could highlight, <laughs> should highlight. But I just had to get that off my chest because I'm like, yo, dude, and, what the fuck? And not for nothing, as I'm looking at his category, I already stated it. Beyonce might finally win that category. Well, Which she category? got uh, album of the year. She got to deal with Sabrina Carpenter though. Ooh, yeah, that's a heavy hitter right there. Sabrina Carpenter can probably win like a pop category, okay, but then like, she's up against Billy in the mm. Billy Eilish. The parts of a feather. Oh. So, oh God. <laughs> That's the pop off right it's there. A, it's a oh okay the pop off oh. in all the categories. So I don't know. We have some heavy contenders. And speaking of the pop off, yeah. not like us is is nominated multiple times. Yeah. So he might actually win a Grammy off for of Not Like Us, which is kind of crazy. What's the bar, Reggie? What? Can oh, just open his mouth? mouth. So I'm having my Grammy, Grammy, Grammy right now. <laughs> It's real. It's it's a little bit of truth to it. It's a little bit of truth to it. Like there are darlings in this Grammy shit, in this industry shit, and yeah. clearly Andre three thousand is one. He farts and is Grammy nominated, and obviously, I do think it deserves it. The Kendrick nod. I, mm-hmm. I do oh, think yeah, he's deserving sure. of it. Yeah. So I don't want to play into like the whole Drake. Oh, because Kendrick said something, he's gonna get a Grammy. No, like what he did. Like I, I, I you could easily say this is the. The most popular diss song of all time. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get into like the semantics of the greatest. That's subjective. Oh, that's but you can't deny the impact that it's had. Yeah. Like I saw the Sacramento Kings owner of the Sacramento Kings was wearing a shirt that said "Not Like Us" because of the Drake and I the Demar that. Derozan kind of tension that they had and, after the Toronto game. And not for nothing, back to back from Drake was nominated for a Grammy. It was. Yeah, so. Okay. Oh, yeah. It just didn't win. No, I don't think it won. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, yeah. I feel like <clears throat> we wouldn't know if it won. Yeah. But fact check me sure. on that. We could he, be wrong. That would have been emphatic. And I don't think he has a bunch of Grammy wins. Drake hasn't really had a great relationship with the Grammys in mm-hmm. the last few years. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, he didn't submit any music this year. Oh, okay. Because I was going to bring up, I was like, where's Drake in the nominations? But I guess, wait, did he, we know that he officially didn't submit anything? Yeah. Okay. He did not submit anything this okay. year. How much do you think Kendrick really hates Drake? We saw that all throughout the no, year. Like, still, I think no, it's yeah, still, pretty. Like, you think, I, I don't think there's a word in the dictionary to describe how much he really deeply hates his. Okay, man. he don't really because like, you could have just let the song do what it does. You didn't have to submit it to the Academy. No, if I'm Kendrick, I'm <laughs> submitting it. I'm winning it. all. The, I'm sweeping the, all the awards I can. He like, submitted. Like I'm Euphoria. finishing the job. He did, like, as he said. Euphoria is my favorite song of the battle. Uh, it probably is. The best, yeah. I think it may be the best song. <gasps> Am I the only one? I feel like people also didn't like when I said this. When I said it at first, I I feel like Family Matters was the best song out of the entire beef, and I didn't know people didn't agree with that. You know what's funny, Reggie? When people say best song, I think they mean the most palatable song. Mm-hmm. That's what I think they mean by Family yeah. Matters. Like all the people that like that style of rap, which has been like you know very mm-hmm. popular. That beat for Drake, changes. Those beat changes crazy. that Drake is accustomed yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I and think that's flow. really what they meant. And the flow. Yeah, See, when you're four, you really have to use your brain power. <laughs> you had to decipher. Stupid. No, my fault. Twenty. My fault. Never you. Never you. You. He, he was really talking on Euphoria. He was like, going crazy. if we go back 
And maybe that's something we could do at the end of the year because that was also a moment for us too. I know a lot of people tapped in with us because of that beef. Like a lot of people discovered us I, I, yeah. and, and stood with us yeah. due to that beef. So I think if we actually recapped it at the end of the year, we would pick up things that we didn't really get a chance to pick up because we was trying to cover it live. Yeah. Like every time they went into the studio, so we, we came went into the, the studio. studio. <laughs> like legit. No, I'm I like, God the, damn. I remember one of the our first beef episodes. It was like, guys, like we have to go in tomorrow. Like I know it's a Sunday, but yeah. I feel like this could be big for us. Blah, blah, blah. And then we just kept doing it. Like, yeah, and it paid off too. Yeah, it did, and it, it, definitely, it definitely paid off. A lot of visibility. Again, a lot of y'all stuck with us because of that. Um, so I wouldn't even be mad at the end of the year when we do like our wrap up episode. Yeah. Yeah. We go back and we tap into like each song mm-hmm. or some of the songs that kind of resonated with us because Euphoria is probably. Up there with one of the greatest diss songs of all time. You want to hear something? Personally, you want to hear that. something funny? What's up, what's up P? So during the fifty eighth Grammy, the same award that Drake was nominated for, Kendrick won that. The back to back year, it was all right. Kendrick won that with all right. Oh, oh shit! Like was it like best rap song? I, uh, oh, yeah. Oh man. Damn. Yeah, they hate each other, yo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hate. Yeah, they hate each other, yo. This hate. Damn. That's back crazy. To- See, you can't say that when back to back was nominated for a Like they drink. always meet at a yeah. certain point in their careers, like very important moments. Yeah. And Kendrick won it, like in a lot of them, in a lot of those matchups. So But then I just get so conflicted because whenever I see like the Twitter wars of who would you rather listen to for the rest of your life? Oh my it's god. Drake. I'm back to Drake. So yeah. it's like I, I, I get he gets like all the awards and the prestige and he's great at what he does. They're both great in what they do. Yeah. But then when it comes down to, hey, if I'm going on a road trip with Alex and Reggie for 18 hours cross country, who do I want to listen to if I had to listen to their catalog for the entirety of that trip? Most of us, a lot of us, including myself, is gonna pick Drake. So I'm very conflicted. With how everything played out. It's them R&B records, yo. Like, 2014, 2015, 2016 R&B records from Drake, mm-hmm. they just hit different. Hmm. They just hit different. I'm not that conflicted because I'm like, I could comfortably say, and I feel like unanimously, like, people are like, okay, Kendrick won this beef. But I'm never, I've never been the one throughout this beef to be like, oh my God, Drake's music sucks. I can't look at him the yeah. same. I'm like, yeah. I, Drake makes, like, Phenomenal music. Like, let's not get carried away, guys. Well, you know, like, I internet. can still listen to him. You, you know, know, the internet, you know, uh-huh. if you big up one person, they assume you hate the other. Uh-huh. So, it's just the times we live in, it's fine. Uh, but up. speaking of rapping, you know, the rap song category. Yes. Tommy Richmond calls all that hoopla for nothing. He's not even fucking nominated. I'm mad I ever <laughs> wasted breath on him. <laughs> we got to get a whole second. Remember? But that's why I pointed out when we were talking about it, when we were really analyzing, like, oh, should he have even submitted to the rap category? And I pointed out, I was like, He's not even nominated though. He just submitted. <laughs> you right. You so if he doesn't point. get nominated, this would all have been what? for nothing. Like people called him out. Like he really caused a conversation around for him nothing. that really. Me and Alex was ready to swing <laughs> over, <laughs> over Tommy Richmond's See, song. See, look. <laughs> like he really almost. You're like he's not rough. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. Hey. Even in the group chat, there was some tension. No. <laughs> and then it went back. Like the co- that conversation ended. And then the next week, we <laughs> spoke about it again on the pod. Tommy Richmond couldn't fool me and he couldn't <laughs> fool the Grammys. <laughs> If you guys don't know, like Reggie is referencing, Tommy Richman and his team, uh, they submitted Million Dollar Baby into the rap category for the Grammys. The Grammy said, nah. <laughs> Although. They didn't make it. I feel like he could have worked in a melodic rap category. I could see that. You know You're what? Right. I'll yeah. give him that. I could have seen that. Yeah. I could have seen that. All of that hope a lot for nothing. And he possibly could have won. Yeah. The melodic rap category, honestly. Can you name two additional Tommy Richman songs? Devil, Devil is, is a, a lie. lie. And, um. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so for that reason oh, alone, yeah, you have it, <laughs> right? Because it's not true, any, y'all. It, no, but not just listen. No, hear me no, out. no, it's no, not true, y'all. Song. No, but hear me out though. Don't do but that. I so, but I know more songs. No, bro, just listen. You remember all the song titles for songs? Though? Watch this. Yeah. When I give a fuck, mm-hmm. I do. No, that's not now, true. Now the two of y'all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I always give y'all credit. I always big y'all up yeah. as the most knowledgeable people in music that I know personally. Mm-hmm. And I know a ton of people who know music, Facts. but y'all are like really, really at the top. Obviously, I think probably the would be like a Joe Budden who Age. I get that. Right. Somebody who. Uh, yeah. But outside of Joe and I'm being honest, mm-hmm. the two of y'all are like my shining star for music. Oh, look at us. <laughs> and so for the two of you to sit here and name y'all name the first song real sure, quick. Devil sure. in a black dress. What it's called? Yeah, y'all like y'all name that song real quick. Boom, I know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I asked for an additional, which I'm gonna would tell be you three. 
Both of y'all say. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. I mean, I don't care that I can't name three because I never claim to be a, a huge Tommy Richmond fan. No, so for I don't sure. Care. No, like, no, I'm not knocking yeah, you for it, but it uh-huh. just tells me I never want to like like we don't ever really got to talk about him until he well, does anything else. I'm gonna be mm-hmm. honest with you. Maybe it's just me. I don't remember song titles these days. I was just talking, uh, bro. You you don't listen to as much music as me, bro. Respectfully, you listen to a lot of the music. Yo, already, don't diss me when I big you up. You my guy. I just, I, gotta just be honest. I just said you. I just I said you. you was him when it came to music. I love you, my don't God. shoot at me. I remember the same song. The fuck. I, I too remember no, the shoot. Really I too. Like, fuck Alex, wrong with no, you? he was like, Alex, you're my favorite music yeah. friend. And then he's like, Yo, you. And then Alex went to say about the next thing he says. You don't listen to as much music as me. Don't. I just fucking told you that. You don't remember those. <laughs> I know that's my thing though. It is so hard to remember song titles these days i was just talking to one of my homies about this like fam you'll know how the song goes the st- the chorus the hook but the title of the song oh no i'm 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 smoked now but and I, I feel like i only remember the devil one was okay. because it was the second single and that was really the only music he had out at that point that i was privy to I, was, here? I was gonna say a lot of times the title of the song is in the song itself <laughs> sometimes but they getting a I mean, little yeah. yeah they're getting out of out of the box these days i can't lie yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and another person who I saw that people thought was snub is, and this one I agree with this year, is Nicki Minaj. For sure. She had a really big album, Pink Everybody. Friday 2. So and she was, she's not nominated for everything. I, I mean, for anything. So I don't know if mm-hmm. it is a thing to consider, like, did they even submit? But if she did submit and she was not nominated, there's definitely an agenda against Nicki Minaj did, at the Grammys. Like, come on, that's crazy. There's been one. Did she um kind of make an uproar about it at all? She did not. Because if she didn't, then maybe she didn't submit. Because I can't oh, imagine that Nikki yeah. submitted, mm. had the year that she's had, mm-hmm. and not gotten a nomination at the very least. So maybe yeah, she hasn't. somebody on her team just didn't get a chance. Maybe she was like, I don't want to because right. I don't fuck with the politics. Like Nicki Minaj is one of the few superstars who does go against the machine and go against the establishment. Mm-hmm. Like she's very open about, yo, I don't fuck with yeah. none of y'all. Yeah, calls, for real. Calls and, right? Like been saying that about the Grammys as well. For for a while. So yeah. I could see a world where maybe she just didn't submit her team just didn't submit Mm -hmm. um but if they did submit that's a shame and she didn't get nominated that is insane absolutely solely because you know pure sales are a thing of the past her team did submit her team did (gasps) submit. she's coming out with an album in december called pink friday to the hyatt okay Uh, yeah yeah. how do we know she submitted if you don't mind me asking her her team submitted i'm I'm saying how do you know like what is there a source yeah yeah, what's your source cite your sources sir second hmm Okay, as you're doing that, the reason why, again, if her team did submit it, it would be a travesty is because pure sales are a thing of the past, like actual physicals. And on her last album, Pink Friday, that shit did over 100,000 pure sales. A lot of the sales now are just streaming. Mm -hmm. So they still have a fan base as the one she has who are able to purchase physicals still. That's a big feat. And it should be highlighted. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so jaded when it comes to record sales. Yeah. I don't believe them at all. I don't blame you. Like same, yeah. Because everything is so digital. Because I can't even purchase a CD. Like because the game is the game, we know what it is. Mm-hmm. I think that the bigger artists have bigger budgets, and they just pump whatever money they want into that like number. Like I literally, I don't know, and I can't prove this at all. But it just feels really off to me with the numbers, and even somebody like a Taylor Swift, who I think is the barometer for record sales today. Right, she is the biggest, most selling, highest artist. Of our last however many years, right? Even her numbers, not saying it's not true, but I always look at everything like with my third eye open because these people have unlimited amounts of money. If they want to be perceived as whatever it is, they're going to do that. In my opinion, like they have the power to do it. So it sucks. I feel like Nicki Minaj, the way that she's selling her uh, tour, her concert tickets, that's how I gauge the success or the demand for an artist. It's hard for me to be like, oh, wait, this person dropped, like Tyler, the creator. Yeah. I'm not saying he didn't sell what he sold. I know he's super popular, but I also know that he has big budgets and deep pockets to, you know, do inflate if but he, needed to inflate. But he's but always, let me add to what you're saying. Hold when on. he goes on tour. But he's also shown that he's sold relatively high. Each for sure. Album. Yeah, for sure. I just like that. Yeah. And, I'm, and, I, and again, I'm not saying that these people aren't doing it. Yeah. It's just hard because we're in this digital era and I, I I can't believe everything that I see. I don't blame you, bro. Nobody could tell us right now what one stream is worth. <laughs> or a mm-hmm. podcast download. 
You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, cool. What's the metric? What it's like we... an 18th of a penny. <laughs> Literally. So all you could do is compare it to their peers. Mm-hmm. Put it side by side. Did y'all see Rihanna? What she, what she do? This past week? No. She, yes. Maybe I'll find a video. Yeah, she was at a Fenty launch event in Barbados. Mm-hmm. And she was making a speech, which, you know what? I watched it in full and I reported on it. So she was talking a lot about... It was like a speech for the Fenty launch. Um, and she was talking about how her home inspired her so much. And like she, the reason why she does what she does is because of the um, the influence of her upbringing. And then what people really zeroed in on, what she said... I don't know if this is where, where Savon was going, but she said, oh, you know, music is really what got the attention and really catapulted me into the spotlight. Right. But God had other plans for me. Mm. I'm, I'm going to so, play the clip. Okay, and y'all tell me oh, what y'all take away from it. That's it, y'all. No album. Right? Through music. And I want to say music was the thing that got the attention. But God had other plans for me, and I, I was able to create in ways that it was... Ways that were, like very sincere and genuine or organic and authentic to the things that I love. So it doesn't even feel like a job. But when you bring it home... So like Reggie said, that was at an event. Yeah. The audio sounds a little ass, but it's okay. We, mm-hmm. we will make do. Um, it sounds like she's just saying what pretty much what Reggie said. Music introduced me to the world. Music is what got me here but i don't love music i don't and she didn't say anything about the industry but she said i'm able to do something that i love which is to create yeah and so i saw a lot of theories on the timeline about did she is she not able like did her ability to perform to sing diminish to the point where maybe she doesn't want to do it um i think that's bullshit because she's rihanna <laughs> she, she has just did the super all bowl. the budget she just did the super bowl while pregnant um, but yeah, we going back to just how much is a stream worth? We always have this conversation at least like two to three times a year. I could imagine somebody like a Rihanna who's like, oh, wait, I made billions off of doing something that I really love. I'm never going to make music again. And I don't love music. Like she said, I don't love music without saying I don't love music. I don't think she said I, I disagree. Like, I don't think she like the sentences that we just played was her saying I don't love music. I think. She, if she didn't love music, she wouldn't have given us the phenomenal. She literally went on like a 10 album, like run of hits, hits, hits. So if she never, if she doesn't love music, I feel like she would have never given us that. I feel like she still loves music, but she just loves what she's doing more. Like she's really like, wow, this beauty thing, like this hair, makeup space. I'm like, wow, like I really love this. So that's why she's pursuing it now. But I don't think she's like, hey, I don't love music anymore. I think if you love something, you still participate in it. And I'm not saying it has to be the focal point of what it is that she's doing, but she has no interest or it doesn't appear that she has any interest to do anything with music. Other ways to participate in it. She's always bigging up new artists. Like just, are you saying the concept of her making music is what she's lo- yeah. she hates or just music in general? She, the industry and just music, it, it just doesn't seem like from what she just said is I'm able to do the things that I love to do. Yeah. Right. And that doesn't mean she doesn't love music, but when she just doesn't put out any music when she could, I think I was, that's a sign of, hey, I just, it got me here. I think it's more so the industry. I was just listening to ASAP Ferg's album. Shout out to uh, Ferg. It's called Daryl, something like that. And on one of the songs, he goes, I want to drop every month like Future. <laughs> you know that's how he's like that. you know that's how he's rapping. Okay. But shout out to Ferg, shout out to Delhi, what up? Uptown, what up? But it just led me to think how depressing the process is and how it could take away your effort and your energy. I don't think the love goes away though. I like Ferg from what I could hear on that album, he definitely still loves music, but just think about how the industry does these artists. Yeah. I was about to say, cause de- yeah. in rap, like a lot more comes with it. Like you could compete, Damn. but like it's there's a still a lot of other stuff that, yeah. The, the industry is downsizing. We've talked mm-hmm. about that as well. And not for nothing. I have this theory and maybe it's not a theory. Maybe it's just, I feel like rap fans are far more fickle than pop fans. Or just like they'll turn on the rapper really yes. quick. Yeah. Like pop fans have the thing to just continue to just to be so strong willed in their mm-hmm. fandom for that artist or that person. And just like have fun. Yeah. So with the combination of the label playing with you or the industry playing with you, and then hey, if I don't make the type of vibe that they're looking for, it'll flop. And then if it flops, they're gonna call me a flop. And then that fucks with my confidence. I feel like it's a confidence fucker, but I don't know if the love truly goes away. Maybe she just feels more comfortable and in control with her Fenty ventures. And she's like, 
And then on top of, you know, having two kids in the last two years, I think just the timing of like, is like, there's a lot of things that happened in her life that made her not focus on music for so long. Um, I Damn, really y'all shooting mad bell. Nah, no bell. I don't think it's making. I don't know. It's just on some human maybe, shit. Maybe yeah. It's maybe some we're human just shit, being, bro. You human. You said that all the time. My fault, Reggie. Yeah, maybe you. maybe I am being a little optimistic. Like, oh, she doesn't hate music, but maybe Savon's right. She does, and I'm just like not accepting. Think it. about what it maybe, takes for Rihanna to put out music. One this album is, in nine years could have got done if Rihanna wanted no, it to get done. Absolutely. I'm a just saying a, point. That's a, a good single point. once in a <laughs> no, while could get sure. done if Rihanna wanted to just say, she's you know done, what, guys? She's done music though. Yeah. But she yeah. has. Yeah. She got another joint. <laughs> Uh, uh, she does some features. Uh, she does, yeah. some, she she does a, some party next door features. She, 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 she has a joint with Khaled. She has a joint with Khaled. That was Khaled. eight. Y'all name it things that happened last decade. No, within a decade. We're in the 2020s. <laughs> no, all that. The, the song with Bryce and Tiller just, did not happen. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure. But the P&D bet, was after when? P&D was recent. It was on P4, right? Yeah, it was on P4. Let, no? All right, let's 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 get the dates on that. And even if she did see. do that one feature, right? But the love for music still there. Because if she hated it, why would she do it? <laughs> because she owed Party Next Door for all the hits that he wrote for her. So it's like, you know what? I'm gonna get on your album. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. I'm gonna do you a solid. We, yeah, I'm gonna do you a solid, and I'm gonna give you a, a feature. Like she doesn't give. She doesn't do features. She's not doing 2020. 2020. That was 2020. Okay, and that's Party when it door. dropped in 2020. So Facts. it was probably performed, recorded, mm-hmm. and all of that prior to 2020. Oh, we, we don't know. Ass- we could assume. We knowing could. music and knowing the creation of music, we can assume that that probably, if you had to bet, you're a better man. You'd be a fan, dude. <laughs> Just like me. Shout out to us, right? Hey. If you had to bet, she probably didn't do that in the 2020s. It was not performed in the 2020s. I don't know, bro. I'm going to be honest I said you. if you had to bet. I know we don't know. If I had to bet. I don't know because I'm gonna be honest with you. I know artists, <laughs> real shit though, real shit. I know big artists who put music last minute, like on the Big Sean shit, right? He t- I think he said the Cash Cobain record was last minute. Like mm-hmm. these and things. And for Tyla, her Thames record was literally the day before. The day, yeah, bro. Like these things do happen, bro. We're talking about Rihanna, and we all have worked and know yeah. how it. The, how long it takes okay. to create music? Yeah. Like I'm not, but, I'm not telling you that you know. No, like we yeah. can assume mm-hmm. if Rihanna made a song and it came out in 2020, mm-hmm. it was probably written, performed, dropped, laid in a year or months prior to 2020. So 20, "Lift Me Up" was uh, out in 2022. That was the one song that uh, what, what was, was on the Black Panther Black Panther album. <laughs> Black Panther. Okay. Uh, um, Soundtrack. soundtrack, soundtrack. Okay. So that was twenty. So and right, that, was, theory, that was one recorded. song, but it was a soundtrack. All right, but to your point, that was probably recorded in twenty twenty. That was probably recorded twenty twenty one. So right? how many songs has Rihanna put out in the twenty twenties? How None. many features has she been? Okay, so that's what I'm but trying to get my to. My argument is in the process it would take for her to put out a whole project. Is what I'm saying, right? Like women are way different to deal with when it comes to rappers. Rappers, all right, man, we're gonna get you some rapid kits. You gonna get you a new chain. We are gonna do some new press photos. We're gonna do. The- Rihanna is a mega star. Even Cardi B it speaks to why Cardi B hasn't put out her album mm-hmm. since 2019. She told us she's scared. It's it's just think about and just like the expectations, the expectations, like, what you have to take to do to do. These are mega stars right here, bro. Not your I know, little, I know. your little rappers. But I, I do agree. Yeah. Rihanna should just now, drop that shit though. Because like, now, yeah, she yeah, need to drop it. Yeah. Then she got to plan the tour. Then you got to plan the tour around the new kids and the the boyfriend. That's and true. That. Like I feel like lot. maybe she thinks like, okay, I. I have been working on this album, R9, for the past few years. But then when I drop it, I so much comes with it. And I feel like that maybe is also is what giving what's giving her like immense anxiety. Like, how am I going to get away from the kids? Like, to the to do the press, the tour. So I think just like she's getting caught up in her head. And she's like, you know what? I'm not going to drop it. When album. you're Rihanna, you don't have to do any of that. When you're Rihanna, the huh? world is at your mercy. If no, she said, you I, no, you don't have to tour if you're Rihanna. You have to work the album. Yeah, she work can't just goal. drop it and go away. She, yeah. you have, like, so much comes with dropping mm-hmm. a successful album and making, making sure it does well. Okay, like, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Yes, she may have to work the album. But going back to the point of megastars, I think Beyonce changed that narrative when she just dropped an album. Ten years ago, Beyonce said, you know what? Nobody knows anything about this. She didn't work the album. Beyonce doesn't do interviews. She just dropped a body of work and world nobody stopped. knew it was coming and the world stopped. <laughs> so I don't think that Rihanna is not on the same level as Beyonce when it comes to that, especially when it's been almost a decade since she dropped. Like, yes, I get it. In most cases, especially like a Cardi B, Cardi B only has one album. <laughs> Rihanna has given us uh, an entire body of work <laughs> to where I think she's built the credit with us to just be able to drop the album, not say anything if she didn't want to. and. We're at the mercy of her. 
this isn't like it's not a Cardi B comparison in my brain because Cardi B, this would be her sophomore album the next time she actually drops a studio album. Yeah. So there's still left to be desired and still a lot to be proven. Mm -hmm. Rihanna at this point in her career is a legacy act. Like she can tour and eat off of her back catalog mm -hmm. without ever having to drop a new song. And she's still one of them. She just performed at the Super Bowl. Facts. Like, we know what it takes for you to even get on that stage in itself. So for somebody like Rihanna, she doesn't have to work an album if she didn't want to. If she, in my opinion. No, yeah. If think, she loved music, mm -hmm. she could just put out the music. And I want to say that I think we all in here agree with that sentiment. No, right, right? I, I think, right? no, to drop an album and make it successful, you do have to work an album. Beyonce, okay. when she drops... She doesn't do interviews, but she goes on a, a like a crazy ass tour every time, and she shoots video, video, <laughs> video <laughs> videos for every single song on the mm -hmm. album. Like she, it, that's her way of working the album, making sure it's a success on the charts. Like Rihanna can't just drop a project and run Rihanna away. Like she knows that she knows she you has think to do, she would flop. Not flop, but no, no. But she doesn't want to just drop an album and it does well for a week or two. Like no, she has to do things to make the album successful. I agree with she that. knows that. Like, yeah. I do agree with that. But Especially it's still Rihanna, the, bro. Like. No, I, but again, we're fans, so it's easy for us to say that. When you're the actual artist behind it, and you have to deal with whatever it is you're dealing with in your head on the process of what to do it or how confident you are. Mm -hmm. That's when things sway. But yeah, so, yeah. We, we would take any Rihanna music right now. We don't give a fuck. Hey, drop all now. What's yeah. up? And for the record, she's had two drops, two singles sent in the 2020s era. And not for nothing, man. <sighs> Let's go to her albums, right? Yeah. 07, 09, 2010, 20, uh, 2011, 2012, 2016. 06 and 05, too. 06 and 05, too. Yeah. She's I'm given sorry. us a lot. She yeah. has. <laughs> yeah. She she definitely has. But it, it just goes back to the clip that we played with her. It doesn't sound, and it is okay. Like, you don't have to love the things that you was introduced as, as the person or the occupation that you was introduced to the world as, right? Like, they, there is a thing as pivoting in your career. And she's clearly pivoted. She doesn't need to love music in that way. I think from the clip that we played, it sounds like maybe she just doesn't love music or the music industry or the things that come with music. Again, some of the theories on Reddit, y'all know I'd be deep diving in Reddit, <laughs> um, was that they you know they some of her ability may have diminished. Her vocals, her ability to sing, um, her ability to perform, whether it be because of her voice. Um, yeah, th those are some of the things that I saw. Also, we don't know her record label deal, if she's even in a deal. If she dropped, would she be independent? Is she still signed to the label that she was when she uh, finished? Like, you just listed how consecutive she dropped albums. Mm -hmm. We've seen artists do that where they're like, yo, I just want to get out of this deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just give you everything I got, and now I'm free. Mm -hmm. And it feels like maybe she could have even done that. Um, and the splits. We never knew what her splits were like with the record labels, um, you know, how that whole thing worked out when she was still dropping music. And she's a billionaire now. <laughs> she's a billionaire. It's a lot different when... But Hove's a billionaire. He puts out music. I think Hove is a, is a perfect comparison to what you're saying, right? Like, we got the 444 album, right? After a brief hiatus. This is also the same rapper who has said he was going to retire a few times, right? Mm -hmm. But then he pops up when he actually feels like it. Right. Or when it feels he has that motivating factor to continue to want to put out music. So I don't think Jay-Z stopped hating music, but I do think he put some more things on his plate. Right. I do think he got some more businesses that take his time. Oh, and of course, he, sure. he got older, of course. So, yeah. Are people asking for a Hove album? Because the last yeah, dropped in 2017. So that's been what, yeah. like. Seven years, but I don't know if it's just me if I'm living in a bubble. But I feel like no <laughs> one's like, "Yo, ho, where's the album?" Like no one's asking him for an album. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know, but yeah, I get what Savon say. I think, um, yeah, her love for music definitely diminished, and what she's doing now is definitely what she truly loves right now. For sure, like for yeah, sure, for sure, yeah. And we Salute could it, we could tell, like it's very clear. Drop on on, girl. <laughs> Yeah. And also, just to throw this in the Grammy, because I love the tangent we went on, but mm -hmm. shout out to Dochi. Yes. She's oh literally God. a new, well, not a newcomer. She's been grinding for a lot, but this album did what it needs to do. Like, she's, she's nominated, like, I think at least three times. Yeah, yeah. fire. Great saw, project. There was a conversation around her, mm -hmm. which yeah, really that. shifted my perspective on the term industry plant. Mm. Right? Somebody was saying, or the, the conversation was, hey, she's an industry plant. 
And then there was somebody who responded in this tweet, well, X. Yo, what is an X called? I call it Twitter. I still call it Twitter. I, Mama yeah, called it Twitter. 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 Yes, yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, we still, yeah. I call it Twitter, We, we still bro. aunties and unks calling it tweets. <laughs> I'm okay with... I'm That's never cool. calling nothing an X. What the yeah. fuck is that? Because okay. some people that still... Mad weird. Nah, I ain't got X's the, either. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> some people <laughs> still literally have the bird logo, so Twitter still exists. Okay. Yeah, I'm I, Twitter. Right. Yeah. I, I saw a tweet but it was like, Yes, she is an industry plant, but she is what an industry plant looks like when you invest in an artist. Like, how would they define an industry plant? Yeah, um, I, I can't speak for that person, but what I took away from it is, <sighs> yeah. not all industry plants are bad. Like sometimes the marketing, the the mission of the label and the people who support that artist. Yes, I am. I want to plant this person in front of you so you can see them grow into the artist that they become. So it just shifted how I looked at the term industry plant, because most of the times we associate industry plant with like a logic. Right. Or um, who who else has been claimed to be an industry like a Takashi six nine back when he was a thing? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I define it as an overnight success. Yeah, Th- that's for me. Mm-hmm. And personally, Dochi isn't that she's been she, on TDE for she, years. No, yeah. even before, yeah. I remember when she first signed us to TDE, I remember like reporting on it. I'm like, mm. oh my God, this girl. But like, and then I look back at her catalog. She's been grinding for so long. That's why I hate like the industry plant stuff because I just feel like it really, like it's just such a shot to all the work that they've put in. Like she's this really talented girl from Florida. And if you listen to her music, it's like, it's always been like crazy. Like she's mm. always had this crazy music, crazy videos, and she's just getting her just due. That's what I see it as. Yeah. Like I want to be an industry plant. Do you? Shit, yeah. I want these, somebody nice. to get you some seeds. I boy. want somebody to plant me. <laughs> yes, all and right? give me all the resources. <laughs> Pour all the resources, all the money, the time, and just watch me grow. The, right? the other and thing, fill my pocket. The other thing with Doja too, she hits a lot of demographics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, for sure. Florida baby. She's black. She got a BBL. She's a woman. I, I heard she, she said she got a BBL. Oh, she did. Yeah, yeah, she said that. Yeah, she said it like five She was on, she was on, a, po- she was on a podcast, <laughs> and the guy was like, "Oh my god, like your body, you know, you're so natural." She's like, "I'm not." So I like that okay. she keeps it real. So. Yeah. Could have fooled me. Yeah. Looking good, it looks girl. really natural, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout for sure. Dochi, man. For sure. But yeah, I mean, I hope she wins. She deserves that. Uh, that album really was phenomenal. So Alligator Bites never healed. I love it. I love it. Is there anything that stood uh, stood out to us in the Grammys? Oh, I was upset that um, mm-hmm. that Leon Thomas wasn't nominated. But then I Ooh. I checked and he only submitted Mutt the uh, single because everything else was later off the cutoff date. So say, yeah. I'm not mad anymore. So. Okay. Okay. Bryson Tiller wasn't nominated for anything. Damn it. Party next door. Damn. Well, oh, Tinashe, I was sad about that. She had a really great year. She I was a nominated. nasty girl. That was a big song. <laughs> That's why I looked back. I was like, wow, this really was a strong year because there were so many contenders. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it should be a great show. I'm really looking forward to if Kendrick wins something, like the reaction to that. I know that's going to be fun to cover. It's so. going to be another convo. Isn't the Grammys like a week or two apart from the Super Bowl too? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's in February this year. It's usually in January, mm. but it's he February 2025. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, know yeah. he is going to like stomp on Drake's grave. <laughs> that shit's about to line like, up. It's so crazy because he doesn't have to say anything for the next few weeks, months or whatever. But there's a quiet storm just brewing. <laughs> that is 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 un is inevitable yeah. that something is going to recapture, reignite that, reignite something within that. Like it's not moment. over. Like it, it it can't be over because I'm on I'm, I'm performing at the Super Bowl and I'm nominated for every Grammy for every disc. He hey. didn't put out an album. Do we realize we're talking about his Grammy nominations yeah. strictly for him dissing Drake straight off diss tracks. So <laughs> it can't die down, right? Like, it's not even like you could bury it in, oh, this was a phenomenal album and it just had this song. Like, no, every diss that I put out to this light skin motherfucker <laughs> is what we're going to highlight. Whether I win or lose, it, it's just not going to go away for at least, you know, February, March. Yeah, it was no, a legendary time. But it's not going to end because Kendrick is also definitely dropping a project next year. Mm-hmm. So it's just going to keep going. And we love it because then we have more to talk about on Need to Know Podcast. Get up! <laughs> get up! Drake! Get, 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 get up! Get up! And get, and get, 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 him. Guess what, folks? If you guys think Not Like Us isn't going to be played on that Super Bowl stage, oh my goodness. Woo, I don't know. You are in, well, Pierre, you are in for a rude know. awakening. You don't think it's going to be played, Pierre? If, get, if, if they don't, if they don't play it, they'll play a certain variation of it. Oh, they playing it for sure. You know, I don't know if you can get off the pedo stuff on a oh, national stage. You remix like it. 
But the oh, yeah, song itself will get played. Yeah, he won't he won't rap those parts, but no. they're gonna find some way to yeah. You like can't said, say uh, like certified pedophile. You gotta say certified little girl lover. No, you can't. No, that's even worse. <laughs> no, you can't. It's too, it's too, <laughs> I get it all. No, so that's what you do. You when you know it's coming up, you just let the crowd say. You go so. Uh, uh, you look call like action. You gotta become like a that real MC. Yeah, yeah. You better be in the house saying huh? yo, yo. You just gotta put the mic That's out and let do. them say yo. That's, yes, so it's like certified lover boy, certified yo, and then get it. And they gonna I, do, I do it. it. Yeah, it's like yeah, when he ran yeah. it back at the pop out show. Right, yeah, yeah. about five, six, seven times. Yeah, <laughs> that pop out show really did something. Yeah, dr- oh yeah, uh, man, it's tough. It's tough. You think he watches the Super Bowl, Drake? Um, I mean, even if you don't watch it, you're gonna see it. <laughs> you're gonna see it. Though. Drake is on social media, just like the rest of us. Yeah. Um, it, you can't avoid it. Like yeah. when you're in that spotlight, when you're in that position, whether you watch, like, you see unless he's just really not a football fan, I can't imagine him not watching it. But the Super Bowl is like a holiday. Drake, he doesn't strike me as somebody who's gonna like not be around people during the Super Bowl. I don't know. That has to be very awkward for him and his camp, knowing that. Yo, there's a big chance that this diss song is going to come on on the most watched <laughs> televised program <laughs> of the year. And like, this is it. This etches this diss song in, in stone. Like, even back to back, as great as it was for that time period, people only talk about back to back when we talk about beefs and hip hop. Yeah. Right? Like, nobody's just like, oh shit, y'all, like, let's bump that back to back. Like, there's <laughs> right. nothing that really keeps that in. Rotation. This moment of time. Mm-hmm. Unless you're talking about beef. Like, a Super Bowl mm-hmm. performance, we still talk about Prince mm-hmm. and Beyonce and Janet Jackson, mm-hmm. Justin Timberlake, and uh, I know Katy Perry was a little bit unforgettable, but etched in history. There's a, th- this will etch it in a different type of way, mm-hmm. put it a different type of spotlight on it. So if you're Drake, Ooh. you got to get up, <laughs> fight back, get up. I do, want him. Hey. I do want him to do <laughs> And the great words though. of Meek Mill. I will say this though. Whenever that party next door Drake album is coming, I don't I don't think it's gonna wash uh people's mouths out from the taste they have about the rat beef or how they're perceiving him. But what I will say is that I I'm pretty confident that there is very good music on there. And it will pretty do its thing com- it because will. it's yes. gonna hit a certain demographic mm, that does not mm. give a fuck about the beef, and that is the baddies. Yeah. And we're going to run that shit to the ground. It's going to go viral. (laughs) All the songs are going to go viral on TikTok. So the girl's getting ready, looking sexy. It's going to do its thing. So That combo right there? I think it's too late. When I personally, I, when I, you say too late, you mean like how people are going to view him in general? Yeah, man. No, not, not just him. What do you mean? I think even party next door is music has kind of been lackluster. It kind of came and went. I don't think people care about that because I don't think what you're saying is invalid. Uh-huh. I'm just saying that the combination of Party Next Door and Drake is powerful. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. Yes, 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 it is. Okay, yes, it is. I'm, I'm, you know that. No, you, I could be wrong. We, that's our era. <laughs> no, it is. That's I, I know, but yeah. does it have lasting power? Like, nah. is it, oh, it was a moment what, in time. That's man. what I'm saying. Like, okay, I see did, what you're saying. did they miss the window of doing that? Nah. Because if they did this five years ago, six, seven years ago, I think it. Just because of who they were in those moments. Mm-hmm. And again, don't get it fucked up. Like, it's still Drake and Party Next Door. Yeah. Some, something off of that is going to be fire in my rotation. It's in my ring off. Like, it is. Like, I'm not <laughs> doubting it. But yeah. I'm just saying, the way that music is, the position that Drake is in right now, and even Party Next Door. Like, I wouldn't put him as one of the leading R&B guys today. I agree with that. But you ever seen Dragon mm-hmm. Ball Z when Vegeta and Goku fuse together? <laughs> yeah. Go and turn into Gogeta? Uh-huh. That's what's finna happen, yo. <laughs> I hope so. All right, we'll yeah, see. That's I my hope favorite so too. type of music. Yeah, me too. I hope yeah. so too. Me too. We'll I see what happens. We'll see what's up. Though. Just one last trivia question. Yes. Whoever gets it right, don't look on your phone. No cheating. No cheating. Whoever gets this right, um, I'll Venmo you two dollars. Oh man. So what is the difference between in the Grammys the song of the year category and record of the year category? Oh Ooh. my god, I don't know that. School us. Song of the year and record of the year. Yeah. It's two different categories. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Why do they have these both? That's a good point. Does it have point. to do something with like the composition of the record? Am I allowed to give hints? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm out the race. I'm cooked. I don't know what's going okay, on. Okay, never mind. It's over. Teach so, me. okay, nobody wins. Nobody wins the $2. <laughs> <laughs> Savona ain't come close? Savona ain't come close for the $2? Which one has to do with the composition? Record. 
No. Yeah. So really? what? So song of the year recognizes the composition, meaning the songwriter. I used the word, but you said for Yo, record. That's crazy. Want, gang. You said you said for record, and that's wrong. It's for song of the year composition, <sighs> okay. and the record honors the recording of it. So like the production, the engineers, everything, that, the performance, and then song of the year is for the songwriters, the composition. Thank you for the making more you that. Know. Thank you for making that clarification, Reggie. That's that's really good to know, honestly. Yes. Yes. It's interesting. No, for real. Because like, each, each song that wins in each category won for a different reason. Oh, wow. All right. Well, thank you for that, Reggie. Also, quick shout out to Shah Boozy. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, my God. He, he dominated the uh, charts. Another I'm industry plan. Stop. 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 <laughs> every time. He is. Every time it's a nigga you, you don't know they yeah, are No, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an industry plan. What makes you think that? I'm what not makes saying you saying I gotta do that. Like, he doesn't I have a research good, on boy. It's, I mean, it if goes, you put that, if you find have, that, wait, 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 yeah, yeah. Say, he doesn't have a good what, Savon? <laughs> what? You said you were about to say he doesn't have a good something. A what? Everybody in the club. No, I said he, I, I think I was gonna say he does have a good song. Oh, does okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he has a good song right he now. He has a great song. You know, it was very, it was genuinely popular. But he did come and sweep like. Everything though this year, so even his Billboard record this year, I think it's the longest running. Yeah, it's, I saw him at the BET oh, Awards uh-huh. with Jay Quan. Shout out to Jay Quan. And then after that, I saw him with Patrick Mahomes at the NFL halftime show. That's called placement, Sable. No, I'm just, I, it's okay. <laughs> he was he he is a plant, right? A plant where the people that invested in him uh-huh. poured into him, and he grew his roots and shit. Okay, I'm not like industry plant can't just always be a negative thing. I don't think it's negative. Real talk. When mm. I think industry plant, I think, okay, here's someone who hasn't put out music before mm-hmm. and decides to dip their feet in the music. Okay. And the internet starts to fuck with it. And then they put the backing behind them. So like, if you have music before that, I don't the really hit. consider the hit. Thank you. I don't really consider that to be a hit. I mean, uh, industry plant, for instance, he put out an album in 2018. Mm-hmm. I-, I had no idea. So hard for me to say that. Lady, I, Lady I, I Wrangler. It's called Lady Wrangler. Ra- yes, Lady yeah. Wrangler. I'm looking I mean, at it right now. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'm not mad if you're an industry plant or not. Like, if you're genuinely talented and you're cool, like you have a good personality, like, yeah, be a plant. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> that, cool with the plants. Think, plants be cool. Yeah. 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 I think you might be a plant. Shout out to all the yeah. plants, man. Any, anything else y'all have on <laughs> <laughs> on uh, the the Grammys? Because if not, I want to ask y'all a real serious question. Ah, uh, let's get to the seriousness. I don't think we need. It's this. actually about. One of your great whites, Alex. Oh. So maybe you oh. can answer this. Oh. Because I'm really confused. Oh. I don't know how to feel. Yeah. Um, it actually bothered me. Like my stomach turned when I saw this news on my timeline. What they did. It's like, why is Jack Black obsessed with the <laughs> devil? <gasps> Wait, what? We must pray for him. What is going on? Y'all didn't hear about Jack Black playing the devil in his upcoming Christmas movie? Excuse where me? the premise what? is there are kids, children writing Christmas letters to Santa. And this one kid, I guess he's dyslexic. He can't spell. And he wrote a letter to Satan. And Satan is Jack Black. How is that I dyslexia? I saw the preview to this in the movie. Bruh. I just, I don't know how. I didn't, I don't know. He just, he thought Santa would spell Satan. Oh. <laughs> and so the kid that ain't dyslexic. That's dear not. Satan. <laughs> that, that is something else. Right. Shipped it off. And Yo. Jack Black okay. was like, what you know, is going on with Jack I'm so, Black? I'm so <laughs> sorry, Mom, if you're watching. I don't support the devil or anything. But that concept is kind of funny. <laughs> like mixing up the letters. That's like, what that's happened. Funny. Is like, this his first running with the devil, Mr. Jack Black? I yeah. I yeah why do you call him obsessed? Y'all never heard of Tenacious D? Yeah. There's a, ain't that a movie? Yeah, it's yeah. a movie. It's a band. Tena- oh, oh, yes, I have. So he Tena- keeps D. doing devilish yes, I things? I've seen that. There was the devil's in there. The I'll, devil's like I'll the like catalyst that. of tenacious D. Doesn't D does the D stand for? I don't know what the D stands for. Y'all never heard this? Wait, what is this? Like a Jack Black song? This is Tenacious D, Jack Black, and his guy. I remember the movie with all his, the kids in it. And shit. His guy was like a real big Trump supporter, so he cut his guy off. But I think he brought him back. But like this is oh, Jack this is Black. Ben? This is Jack Black. You have great wife. Like his band? Yes. Oh, he off the list. Oh, that's it. He's this is your great white. <laughs> that's it. He's the devil in this. That's it. That's it. Dan Olaf. Nah, Dan Olaf. Wait, is, this, to play. is this being? Is this him being serious or was it like a bit? This is or like a scene from a movie of Jack Black. Listen. Oh, it's from a movie. This is Jack Black singing to the devil. Oh, say so he hate him. I don't know. Uh huh. Challenge. 
He's challenging him he's to challenging like the a rock and roll. Yeah, off. yeah. But why is he talking? Don't to be the trying guy? to impress the devil, Jack. <laughs> the fuck. Like, all right, all right, I, I just, I just don't so, get so, why right, he's so doing look, this. So I can explain the music part. We please, all, Peter, most please. of us know that the devil was a fallen angel. Yes, that is correct. Wait, and, hold and up. Before I got I got to do. Last week we talked politics. I don't know if we got to do oh, religion you, this week. <laughs> no, I can't afford not, to lose another nah, listener. Listen, listen. All right, I can't afford it. Fun, so it's stable. hurting my soul to know that we lost one. <laughs> to even though good riddance, he got to nah, lose. Yeah, two to lose. <laughs> but like we did politics last <laughs> week. Be so careful. What? It's, I'm, it's, I'm it's, just it's saying. I, I, all right, by all means, and go for it. Before he fell, he was uh, he was in charge of worship in in, in heaven, music. So uh, from really? from what this I'm is yeah. true. Yeah. From what I'm hearing is going on with Jack Black in this song that you just played, it seems like he's challenging who was once the leader of music mm-hmm. to a sing-off. But I just don't like the fact that now with the Santa movie that he's doing that with kids. It's it's very there's That's a lot crazy. there's a whole different way that this conversation could go. But that de- a whole devil play stuff, I don't mess with that. Me I, don't, I look at it very interestingly. Yeah, I don't do the upside down crosses. Yeah. I don't even play yeah. like that. I, I think that's what he was saying about the whole so back and forth. The movie the is music. called Dear Santa. And I'm just going to show y'all a screenshot. This is Jack Black in Dear Santa. Like okay. he's legit. He has horns on his head. He, yeah, he's portraying the devil. And again, I haven't seen the movie. I just know when I watch the trailer, oh I'm just God. like, all right. Like, what, what are we doing? Because... <laughs> If this is predicated towards children, but it seems like it's a lighter tone movie, right? It's not like, oh my God. But it's rated man. all, right? It's rated all? I don't know what the rating is for this. Um, it was just announced this last week. I don't know the rating. Oh God. But regardless. That's, that's crazy. In some capacity, it feels like, and again, please go check out the trailer. But it does feel like there is some type of glorification of the devil or some type of putting the devil in a softer light. And it's just strange to me. And we all love Jack Black. And I gave him a pass. On the Tenacious D. Because I'm like, you know what? Hey, yo. Everybody's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It was, it was right there. What does Tenacious mean again? <laughs> Vicious. Oh, with, shit. With rigor. With vigor. With vigor. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, vigorous D. Oh. Uh, <laughs> y'all wild. That's y'all crazy. Episode title? <laughs> yo, tenacious no. D. I'm yo, down. Yo, Santa. <laughs> no. Alex will not be down. He hates that. I'm He's down. not Alex. <laughs> we get tight. I'm yo, down. I'm down. Randomly, I, I was cleaning out my pictures the other day, and I have a cover art. Remember when we when we named the episode Fat D, and Alex got mad at us? Because yeah. I'm like, yo, put some respect on the album title. Nah, you didn't want to call it Fat D. Nah, you didn't want to call it Fat D. I'm trying to see no Fat D right now. Alex said Fat D with my name on it, with my face on the image is crazy. Yeah, they gonna think I'm speaking for myself. Also, they gonna think I'm speaking. Dear Santa is rated PG-13. <gasps> okay, I or this Jack Black movie because I think it is predicated towards kids, but like. Again, when I was young, this was a movie I listened, I watched. I let him I get this, this off, <laughs> and it's just a lot for me. So, and and we love Jack Black. He got black in his name. How can we not? Yeah. So I, I feel like I just I gotta, wanted to quickly highlight that. I'm gonna pray after this episode, just so Damn. whatever was in that music. If anything, it's got to, you know. Okay, uh, I'm not mad at that. Hmm. Uh, keeping it in TV and film, <laughs> uh, yeah. really, really quick. The Penguin, HBO's The Penguin. Um, it's been getting a ton of great reviews. A really lot good. of people vibing with The Penguin. Shout out to Colin Farrell. Yeah, he's killing Shout it. The Colin performance Farrell. that he has displayed <laughs> as Oz Cobb. He's, Wait, yeah. wasn't it Colin Farrell? Yes. Col- mm-hmm. Shout out to Colin Farrell. <laughs> yes. Yeah, shout out to that. Man. Like, <laughs> what? You got me. He's a great wife. <laughs> he's one of the greats. He's, he's one okay, of the greats. We have too many. Okay, we can't give out these. Yeah. Okay, whoa, so whoa, it's, whoa, whoa. it's Sean Evans, yeah. we took, Channing Tatum, Brian, Brian Steele, shout out to Young Thug's lawyer, and yes. then Colin Farrell. We yeah. took out Jack Black. We took out Jack Black. Okay, we have four. Yeah, we got to, you know, Mount okay. Rushmore is four. We got to, you know, do a little swapsy. Damn. Colin Farrell, he killed this role, the Penguin. I love I was like, can, can you guys that? explain it to me? The penguin? Yes. Save on. Take it, it away. It's more, I don't mind, I don't mind, it's more everything. Just tell me about it. <laughs> Save on. Take it away. It's more like a, 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 <laughs> a crime mob type of yeah. uh, series. Okay. It takes place in the DC universe. Did you watch the Batman with um, Robert not Pattinson? Edward, yeah, I was about to say Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> <laughs> Like, did you watch the Batman <laughs> with the Twilight guy? It, yes, I almost Robert cried Pattinson. because I was so sleepy. So. <laughs> 
basically. Damn. You're talking about like the gothic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that shit had me tired too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, I, I hated it. No, yeah, we, a lot of us did. Okay, okay, Collectively, for sure. Sorry, I don't know if I can say that, we but it was the greatest. Okay. Well, wait, wait, it relates to that? So, yes, it takes place in that universe. <gasps> this character was actually Whoa. in that movie. They took the character and made a spinoff series on HBO. Uh, Warner Brothers, Discovery, they owned the IP, so it was easy for them to say, hey, we're going to take this character from this movie and put it over here. Yep. Wow. Um, the show received really, really great reviews. Yeah. Now, this is when I get really conflicted working at HBO. What's up? <laughs> I've saw this show like month, like weeks ago. So I knew how it was going to end. I, and in the moment, I'm like, oh my God, this you is really great. You've been keeping it to yourself the whole time. Yeah, I don't be snitching when it comes to work. Yeah, that's, when, that's yeah, yeah. when it comes like to work, that. I don't snitch. You, you can't. And I knew you would have really loved it, Alex. I know, because I know these you last few episodes. Crime man. shows. Oh, yeah, I love me like, some good. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. I, lo- I used to love cops. I used to love cops. Yeah, so uh, really phenomenal no, no, show. The show, y'all, the I show. Think, I think every... <laughs> oh! <laughs> just had the preface. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> all, all, of, all of the cast, they, it, it was just a great show. I, I expected to clean up at the awards. Yeah. Um, there's also a companion podcast. Make sure y'all go check that out. Really, really done well. If you care about anything behind the shows, we're not getting paid uh, for You're this not. advertisement, but I was a part of that. I was uh, one of the producers on there. Hey. Um, and so it was really dope. I got to kind of be behind the scenes. And sometimes, like, I'll work on shows or, you know, just different documentaries, whatever. And it just doesn't resonate in a way that I hope it does or you want it to, right? But then when you see something actually hit, like, people are saying this is a top 10 HBO show of it's all time. There. Like, yeah. and there's only one season. So for people to say that, yeah. um, it means a lot. I, I just wanted to highlight that. It's been really dope. And you want to know what's dope about this, Reggie? This show was centered around the villain. Yeah. <gasps> like, a lot of the times when we get movies, TV shows, are centered around the hero <gasps> and the good like guy. The Joker? Yo, he's one of those. Yeah. He is definitely one of the villains. Oh, yeah. look at me saying something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. see you. <laughs> okay, because the running but, joke is, guys, because I'm not the movie girl on the pod. Like, I don't know. I don't. I can't name five actors. So it's like. Feel you. But you know Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. <laughs> oh, you don't know Colin Farrell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, Colin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see. <laughs> CF. Oh. CF is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, that was dope because we finally got to see that. And I thought that was cool because I was a little bit conflicted. When the show starts off, I'm really cheering this villain on, Reggie, with the bad foot. I'm really cheering this motherfucker on, knowing that he's a villain in the whole DC plot, mm-hmm. right? And as the show progresses, you get to see why he's a villain. <laughs> but HBO Max, etc., they did such a good job of just, I guess, just showing the human side of a villain. Mm-hmm. And then it's just showing why they are the way they are. Mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil or anything too much, but there is an occurrence halfway through the series that had me stuck. When you think about your family members and things of that nature, like wait, should you guys just do you guys like want to talk about the ending for the people that watched it or no? No, I, I mean I want to give people because the the show just ended this last week, so we'll mm-hmm. give people to resonate with okay. it. There may be some people who are like, oh wait, I'm going to tap in because we're talking about it, so I don't want to mm-hmm. give it away. It's really good uh, because it's still really fresh, but. Um, like Alex said, the show writers, the people that were involved in this series, I think they did a really great job of making you forget that, yo, this dude is a villain. Like, yo, he is here to fuck shit up. I forgot. <laughs> like, we're not supposed to love him. Mm-hmm. And then I think in the finale specifically, I almost cried. Yeah, that was. I'm um, not going to lie. Like, that was a lot. I, great acting. It, it was a great acting, great a acting. great setup. Yeah. Um, I, I almost shed a tear. And that is the type of art that you want to consume when you feel something. Mm-hmm. I felt something watching this finale. Mm, got chest pains. Oh and my shit. god! And TV is like lackluster these days for me. Like I'm not mm-hmm. on the Love Is Blind train like you guys. Don't do <laughs> so, that. Oh, don't say it like that. No, nah, that's that. y'all shit though. I watch everything. Low quality that. bullshit. That's y'all shit. Yo, the that's... Penguin is low quality. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Love Is Blind. But I also watch. Let's not do that. No, 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 but I also watch TV. Yeah. Oh my god! The fuck! I also watched the penguin. He'll bleep that. What? Yeah, yeah, he's not. No, I heard that no, 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 keep no, that. No, 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 bleep that. <laughs> now, now he's scared. Alex, this is how I feel when Savon <laughs> says something offensive and he's like bleep that. I'm like, no, no keep it in. No, Say keep it. it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Your bag. I forgot that was offensive. Forgot. <laughs> So, what do you have against Love is Blind? <laughs> nah, you know. Social experiments. No, like I social used to be like that too. I never used to watch um, reality TV. Like, it's it was recent for me. Like, last two years and now I'm tapped in. So, I, I get what he feels yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like stupid. Like, you know. Nah, I wouldn't call it stupid. It's interesting. 
It is. I wouldn't Social experience. I'm just saying, yeah. comparing it to high quality. Scripted. Consumerism, stuff. you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, just I don't know. So, like, different. Love is Mono is, is elite entertainment, though. Like, for that's sure. quality. The Bachelor like, right is a class. Elite for low quality. Now you're being condescending. What? Yeah. I feel like yeah, he tried. He tried because it's a great show. Like, it's a great show. Uh, uh, but speaking know. of like uh, crying and stuff like that, so I yeah. want to bring up. See, I could participate now because I actually watched the show for uh-huh. once. Uh-huh. It's called Your Honor. Who's the lead uh, actor? Brian Cranston. Yo, what was you? <laughs> That's my twin. I, w- I wouldn't have known the answer. Yeah. I, I, you know you know, wouldn't have I known know the that. Answer. That's why I was just, you know, cutting to the chase. But, um, <laughs> so it's a it's a show about. I could say this part because it, they literally show it in the preview. So yeah. it's about a judge in New Orleans. His wife passed away, and then he's left with his son. But literally in the first episode, this is a show that I need because I can't. I am only tapped into a show if some crazy shit happens within thirty seconds. Like oh, so, someone those? needs to die or some shit. <laughs> and so the son of the judge. Got into a really bad car crash and killed something, some a very important child in the community. Oh, damn. And the and the and the dad is a judge, so it, he it gets very tangled and very le- legal issues are involved. Like he's put in a very hard place. But the finale, I cried. Yeah. So much. Do you guys remember what happened? For sure. I just finished the finale not too long ago. Like I cried. so so much because the whole I'm gonna spoil a little bit, but you guys have mad, mad time to watch it. <laughs> so it's basically about a dad doing everything for his son, like to not get the son in trouble, like doing risking everything, like sweating all day, like breaking his back, doing everything. And the finale, like I cried, like my head hurt so much because I could not stop crying. And I was with John. God bless his heart because he's so used to me just crying all the time, <laughs> like. Yeah. And like I think it's it like I watched it happen the the finale and then I just could not stop crying because it I was like he did all the why are you laughing I'm sorry. no no keep going because like he did all that for that ending and I just it, I think father stuff like father son father daughter stuff hits me extra hard and yeah. like especially in a black community so wait that wasn't that like was a black, black community, community. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, they it were in a black people. community though. <laughs> especially either. in the black community and like cause for me uh, like Pursuit of Happiness Will Smith John Q like those yeah. are movies that really stuck with John me John Q oh, man. and yeah, that was we tough watched one. the finale on a Friday night the mm-hmm. next day on a Saturday went to brunch had like a little pizzeria <laughs> I started crying <laughs> no you didn't but you know what like i just (laughs) it stuck with me so i'm literally tearing up right now because he just loved his son so much see (laughs) that family love you can relate to and i really enjoy shows like your honor because you get to see content whereas there's a good person that is forced to get into some things that they're not accustomed to doing because of the circumstances that that they were dealt with right and bad exactly breaking bad john q I so love shows like that. Yeah, like because uh, anybody can relate to that. Yeah, because I love the dad in those movies because they're, they're they're a good dad, like they're a good person. Yeah. But now that this fucked up thing happened to their child, now he turned into he's another out person, here can't, being a terrorist. Like he's like <laughs> like Josh. Oh, now, sometimes think, you gotta let your kids learn the hard way. No, no, oh, no. Oh, no. Shit. Nah, don't do that dumb shit, nigga. Oh shit. Yeah, I feel bad because it's oh, like shit. the dad didn't ask he for this. Like yeah. you yeah. fucked up his life. Like yeah, that, that that was a tough one. And it, it's like, gonna make you think about who you are. Like what would I do? I think the reason why. I'll end on this because I feel like I'm like going on a passionate rant. But like mm-hmm. he, the that. reason why it ap- affected me so much these dad movies is because I know my dad would do that for me. Like he'll go to jail, he'll mm-hmm. kill people for me. So that's why when I watched it, I was like, mm-hmm. oh my god, oh, <laughs> that's, that's my so daddy. <laughs> I'm done. It, it's funny. No, it, it's funny you even bring this up. I love this topic. Like I love dad movies, guys. Send me all. Oh, send me all the dad movies. I- it, it Don't made, send them to me. It made me think. <laughs> Yo, that's about terrible. Doing things outside of yourself for the things and the people that you love. Yeah. I recently had a dream where I was like, "Oh wow, this is this." I'm I'm scaring myself. Uh oh. Uh oh. Last night I had a dream that I had two dogs. Now y'all know I have one, Mace. I love that's my Shout girl. Out to Mace. Shout out to Mace, who I I Please love dearly, her. and I will defend her with the same honor as the guy in your honor. Right, like I'm gonna go to war. I'm gonna do whatever it can to protect my little pup. But in this dream, I had two. Right, I know I had two. She got comfortable. They were both named Mace. Now, no, what's up with clones? But they were two different dogs. One was more like a pit bull. 
almost and then mace is y'all know Why mace she's like a little target i don't know because right? mace a used to rap like a pit dog <laughs> it was just a, it was a dream so i had two dogs named mace and in this dream i had a really big backyard the backyard was undeveloped so it didn't really have gates and fences it had a really small gate but if you're a really big athletic animal or just a person you could get in my backyard really easy in this dream and so I'm dreaming, and then I realize that I'm not in my own home. I'm in a home that's in Africa. Hey. Now. You came to my place. I, I came to your place. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was there. Come on, enter. And being on, in Africa, yeah. there were a lot of threats to my little dog. We treat dog like okay. a small. <laughs> so now, I don't know why my brain is Yo. wired like this, but I promise you, this is a real dream. I would not lie. Get ready. In this dream, <laughs> animals started infiltrating my backyard. So the first group of animals, you know, like Noah's Ark, yes. when every, like he kept bringing two of each animal. Yes. That was what happened in my backyard. So I let Mace out, the little dog, both dogs, to use the bathroom. I come back. Why did you say it like that? There's two lions in my backyard. Right? <laughs> so now I'm afraid. Because I'm like, damn, my little pup ain't got a shot. <laughs> okay? So I bring Mace back in. I leave. I come back. Now there's two hyenas. And then there's like two snakes. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just trying to dodge these really, really <laughs> dangerous animals See, in this dream. Nice. And not only am I trying to dodge it, but I'm trying to protect my dog. Going back to you saying, like, you would protect anything for your anything. Africa. No, no offense, Alec. Oh, my God. Africa. So I'm taking. They was, they was ready to get my puppy out of here. And I was willing to die for it. Whereas I let my pup go inside and I slept outside with the wolves and the, yeah. You Why got wolves in Africa? Yeah, for sure. Okay. The Why wolves. can't you just go inside with your dog? I don't know. I was in protective daddy mode. So when you said daddy stories, I thought about me being a dog dad in my dream, and I was in Africa fighting off I'm the African what animals. What is this dream? Yo, <laughs> yo, That's like, you know it's, probably some, it's probably symbolic for some what shit. What did you have to eat before you went to sleep? <laughs> Uh, Last night. He had like a Noah's Ark, but an Africa dream to no, protect his puppy. No, no, no. Like, like, what did you eat before you went to bed? Right. Last night? Your appetite can affect your dream, right? For sure. Um, or, or at least, what, what were you thinking about? I don't know. I was yeah, hungover. It's like you're. Uh, we don't think we think about these things, but our subconscious has a way things. of like showing us these things. I was our just dreams. protecting my dog. That I, I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. Ah, uh, that makes sense. That means you about to, you're gonna be a good dad when you grow up. I knew it was symbolic for some. You're going to be a good dad. Yeah. You okay. really know. I'll take that. I'm glad you got out of Africa, though. We treat dogs like squirrels over there. My fault. I'm just I... being honest. I love dogs. I love Stop. pets. I'm being... I I'm talking about how they roam. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're just like outside. It's, it, you know how out here, if there's a dog that you're not... I, you can't identify, you're not familiar with, you might be a little scared, mm -hmm. depending on its temperament. Yeah, nah. They're just roaming out there. Mm. And everybody's just walking past, like... Okay. Like how you would a squirrel. Like, yeah, hey, squirrel chilling. Nah, that's dog What's a typical right. pet? Was... <sighs> I don't know. Probably, you know, they do have dogs for pets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dogs, hyenas. But there are more like wild dogs there <laughs> as well. Yeah, but not as, as common as dogs. Oh, okay. Not as high. Yeah, they domesticate the hyenas a bit much. Uh, for real? In Lagos, for sure. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, you could cool. probably go, you could find one of them Casanova videos when he went to Nigeria before he got locked and mm -hmm. they, they got the hyenas right behind him. <laughs> it's like when Mike Tyson did the Tigers. <laughs> Not kid. <laughs> we got dogs in Haiti too. Wait, Alex, As, you yeah. and, you never. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, you go. No, I was gonna say we got dogs in Haiti too. That you know, will roam kind of like that too. And save on. I think back to your point about the dogs and you know the dream. That also goes back to what you were saying about earlier about putting yourself first. Mm. 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 Full circle. You might have to put yourself you first. You did the science. He did. <gasps> maybe, yeah, he maybe that was like deeply on your mind, and you're like, I'm always doing, like, point. putting myself in these situations, like, putting myself always. in danger, like, you know? Instead of putting myself first. Oh, I just oh, remember I got a call. Yeah. I got a call from my was, brother in the dream, and like, hey, yo, like, they about to kill your dog, bro. You might want to make it home. And I came back and it was just mad African animals in, the, in my backyard. <laughs> just animals. Dream, like... nah, for real, bro. I'm so serious. Like, oh I couldn't God. even make that up. Wait, Damn. Alex, yeah. no no type of content. So for me, it's mm -hmm. father-daughter things. <laughs> no type of, like, content 
makes you cry? Like you could feel. Oh, like, absolutely. The type <gasps> of content, really? yeah, oh. the type of content that makes me cry. What I cried? This is the last thing I cried. Like just, it just hits you. Like literally, John was watching me watch the show, and he he was like, "It's a good show," but for me, I'm like, it automatically made me cry. Is there anything like that for yeah, you? Yeah, when. When someone is just overly a good person and nobody give a fuck in the movie, <laughs> nobody in the movie give a fuck about this nice oh, ass nigga. Oh, like you have a soft spot for them? I like, do, because I'm like, oh. yo, they don't, they can't tell he owe me a good person? Start tearing up. Oh, yeah. Give me an example, because I can't think of any movie. Oh, a um, person like that. This had, like, what's the name? What's the, um. Forrest Gump. There we go. <gasps> you just took it right out of my mouth. Wow. Forrest Gump, I cried. Yo, what Forrest Gump ain't deserve that. Movie. You, he I mean, this episode. this episode. He didn't deserve that. He did it. Yeah, it's like because they can't that. like defend themselves. Yeah, holes got me tight and it got stuck. Oh, <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Wait, did you cry? Though? I don't remember, but I that was you cry with holes. Ah, you right, but that wasn't nice. Tom Hanks oh. always making somebody cry. Yeah, he got those type of films. It was what? What's the film where he crying in the rain and kissing his John? Castaway? Yes! Oh my god! Yeah, 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 that was a good movie too. Yo, this is such a good segment because every time he can't think of something, we're <laughs> like, just show up. like, yes, you just show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team, a yeah. man named Otto. If you want to let a, a tear, if you need your tears jerk, go watch, <laughs> go watch a man named Otto, bro. I'm telling oh, you, you told us I about watched it on a plane and I was sobbing next to the lady next. Like Waterworks. she had to check on me. She she rubbed my thigh. Waterworks. And, what was and it a family movie? It, it was it was just a mo- about a man named Otto and he's just really <laughs> stern and old and he everybody's like why are you so miserable yeah. like you have a great life people love you people care. why are you so miserable and then it takes you through this journey of why Otto was miserable and it made me boohoo like a hoe <laughs> I'm gonna watch it now yeah it, it, and 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 I did it like on a plane it. like I I cried in public. That's how I knew if I was really by myself. You know, I said it how bad. the embarrassment <laughs> or the shame that Kodak Black popped a perk in front of everybody. Just think about how just natural that would have been. Imagine if I was behind closed doors watching a man named Otto. I might have like really let it out. Had some snot going. Yeah. God, that I, shit is healthy, yo. It's not. That shit I, healthy. I, I cried crying. during Spider-Man. That's real. I the first one, though. No, no, Shout no, to- the, oh, my the third one. one. With a brother. The, the, it was like the Spider-Man clone. The three of them? I think there's three of them. Oh yeah, um, I think he told no, us wait, when home, they homecoming. When, or something? Yeah, when it was uh when they had that moment where they said you were the brother I never had or something like that. Yeah, that was the one. I cried yeah. like a little. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because I don't. Have, I always wish I had brothers. And that Aww. moment was like, hey, he about to cry. Right 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 you heard me <laughs> too. That's what that feel like, Reg. Yo. Yeah, that's crazy. <sighs> you my bro. Yeah. Yo, I are you really crying? Nah, I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, guys, I love crying. It feels so good. Like, crying fire. Uh, you gotta get older to realize that though. Yeah. Yo, I'm legit crying, bro. Oh <laughs> wait, put the camera on yeah. you though. That's crazy. Yo, P. But that's why he loves you guys so much, because you guys are like brothers man, to him. P, I'm your bro, man. You good. Pierre's a little, I love that Pierre. Don't take this the wrong way. I know good. people don't All like right, this right. Pierre's a little soft. sensitive. I like that. He he feels things deeply. Yeah, I could be I could be a little sensitive. Sometimes. But not in a bad way. Like you have you're in touch with your emotions. That's good. No. Rank us in sensitivity <laughs> levels on the pod. Huh? As, as the male yeah, co-host, rank us in sensitivity levels. I don't know. You do. I, I feel like you guys are <laughs> you sensitive do. in different ways. That, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. I feel like Pierre, he thinks deeply about things. Like, you know, if we, yeah, he might take, I don't know. Yeah, like just, so just you moments, him like, moments, moments like this, moments like this, you know? And then I feel like Savon, things bother him, but he doesn't like to tell us. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but that's not sensitive, though. And I think certain things bother Alex. For sure. Oh, wait, I just said the same thing for both of you guys. But what, exactly. true. Like, for sure. Sensitivity levels, though. <laughs> Rank us. This, I don't know. this is what happens when you're the only, you know, the leading lady of this podcast. I'm <laughs> so said, sorry. Oh, she said I'm the most sensitive. That's crazy. That's okay. You but can that's do not it. a bad thing. No, that's I, not I, a we're bad not looking thing. at it as a bad thing. For sure. No, no, no. no. I think I'm whoever not. is ranked last should be concerned. Uh oh. Oh. Or maybe see? just in this room. <laughs> Mm. Being sensitive is good though because I feel like I could talk to you about stuff and you're not just pretending like what? I know like, that's why I, I want to know where you gauge how much you could talk oh, to wait, me. Actually, I don't know because like if something because I do believe Savon's very deep, like he's very like sensitive in a good way. But then also you would think I would rank Alex last, but no, if something's like bothering us or something, or like Alex really cares to talk to us about it, like mm-hmm. make someone feel included. So that's also sensitivity I'm, as well. I, I'm learning that I'm sensitive. Somebody just told me this. Yeah. Really? Like, yeah, you know, just, like if, if he feels like someone's like 
upset or left out alex is very like he'll go sensitive. and talk to you yeah like, for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah I'm like that. see i can't ra- i can't ra- that's not just a cop out like you guys are have very different yeah. like good yeah. yeah you know in african culture they don't teach you to be sensitive mm-hmm. so as i get older i'm like not a shit i man like it's, it's and, really show how I feel. and then Savon's like extremely yeah. like introspective, like all the time. Like mm-hmm. that's very like good, like a good deep emotional mm-hmm. like trait to have. I don't know, guys. I can't rank it. Okay, Damn. all right, yeah. So PS first. So we're all number one. <laughs> that's a good. We're thing. all number one. Ladies, like this is a good thing. You don't want you don't want an unsensitive man. He don't care about what you're going through. Like that's Forever. terrible. Like no, yeah, you all need right. somebody who's tapped in who can identify emotion. For sure. Like yes. that and when baths. when I was <laughs> when I was younger. That this is terrible, but fuck it. When I was younger, that was one of my talking points when trying to court a woman. Oh my gosh! What I'm sensitive? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Are you, what? I was just. Yo, always, I always acknowledged that I had emotions. Like I feel like growing up, we was not allowed. To, he wasn't. Like oh, no, for real. Like you were we dra- you were draking. <laughs> Shots fired. Like, no, yes. shots. that's why. No, that's why we love Drake. That's why like, we love Drake. Absolutely. I I always stood firm and like, yo, I can acknowledge the palette of emotions that I have. I don't. I didn't run from my emotions. Whatever I felt, no matter what it was. Like I've always acknowledged that, yo, I do feel things and I do feel something. Yeah. And I feel like that just wasn't Accepted. common. It wasn't. It just wasn't a thing. Like everybody just had to act a certain way very stoic and you know when you're young get influenced by a lot so everybody was influenced by certain mm-hmm. things Facts. and then there's me like nah nigga, i feel I wanna, yeah, yeah maybe i do want to cry today maybe i do want to be angry and i'm gonna like whatever the case may be maybe i feel passionate mm-hmm. whatever it is that i felt or yeah i just always embraced emotions and i feel like now the world is finally catching up or men are finally catching up mm-hmm. to just feeling emotions no matter what that emotion is um yeah, so facts. yeah that that was one of my little talking points no but that's good because imagine bottling that up for three decades and being told be a man don't cry like do you know how how much that manifests in like Bruh. very terrible things like then you start crashing out you take it out on other people like no that's good that you've always been in touch with your emotions nah yeah. for real i had to catch up to you salute yeah. gang yeah. i love what i love when men cry and like let it out because i feel like they're told not to do that so mm-hmm. when they could finally do i'm like oh my god this is good yeah let it out yeah nah, but you never go see me cry though <gasps> that would be crazy you ain't never go see, see. see that's your ego you ain't never go see it. come you on you're supposed, supposed, like, supposed to be healing right now it's like when somebody take a shit like your girl when she take a shit you know she taking a shit but i ain't never gonna smell it <laughs> no but if you're in a I ain't never gonna see See you're it. gonna be around her nah for sure and that's women no matter how comfortable yeah. they are like they'll fart around you cool mm-hmm. and then make it a little cute joke but women will never let you smell or know when they're taking the shit they're and that's sad. how it is with me crying I remember the, I remember the first time I heard my mom fart bro I was like <laughs> when I you up as a kid I was like y'all do that couldn't believe it it was wild it's not crazy. you ma yeah. ma not you I see what you're saying though Savon <laughs> sometimes yeah. like the women in your life blow ass crazy. It just it's be like, God damn, that came out of you. What the? F- what How is going on? How could somebody so cute have such a crazy ass fart? <laughs> Bro, like, show me you human, baby. Like, <laughs> show I me remember, human. I used to really get angry when my mother did that. Why? Like, now she can't fart. Nah. Bro, it was lethal. <laughs> don't, don't do it like that. Don't, don't do it like that. Like that. Like that. This, this the end of the episode. She don't get, she don't get this far. Oh. But nah, bro, I'm not going to hold you. My, I would be angry. She is the only person who would make me angry when she passed gas. It's like one, that? Because it was so bad. Bro, one, it's like, you my mother. <laughs> like, what is coming out of you? And then two, it it it, it was it was brutal. Oh my god! I can picture your brother Dre just laughing was, right now. It like. was brutal, man. Like I'm, I can't front. Like I oh. know my stomach is twisted, and I expect my dad and the men in my life to have really bad stomach issues. But when it comes, to <laughs> oh my god! Shit, Why can't us women also have pass gas? Yeah. Now y'all can, but make sure it. <laughs> it smells like flowers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, my mom. She she made me live through a time where I'm like, hold so, up. But you know what? That's what made you stronger. It did. It might have. See how you got through that? It now you were able to take on any smell. I lived through it. You see that? I lived through it. <laughs> Speaking of live through it, Young Thug, I know we're about to end. <laughs> Last point I wanted to make. He Speaking lived, of live through, through it. Yeah, you know. This is a good topic because yeah. I was very confused. Very confused. In and out. Uh, last week, if you guys caught us, we kind of briefly spoke about Young Thug and his tweets and what did it mean? Uh, real plea deal, Jack, all that shit. Well, it's alleged because we don't know if this tweet is a tweet and delete, y'all. 
or if it's fake. We just wanted to put that out there. But credible news sources and blog places are posting it. So, you know, we'll speak on it briefly. If we get updates on it, of course, we'll speak on it again. But Young Thug had another tweet and it goes, gonna stop acting like we friends on the Internet. I don't know you, my guy. Uh, This is also coming off the heels of future Travis Scott. Uh, and Young Thug and Lil Baby. Thank you. And Lil Baby were just spotted in the studio all together. No shot of Gunner. And yeah, I guess it kind of just adds a bit credence if this is true, that Thug is not fucking with Gunner. And I feel like the first piece of music we get from him will clarify everything. I don't know. When I first saw that, my immediate reaction was like, is this fake? Because like all I right. saw was a screenshot. And I was like, man, this is fake. Like, whatever. We didn't even see him tweet that. But then I asked a friend and she was like, no, it's real. Like, I saw it. So mm-hmm. I'm just going off the fact that it's real. Right. I don't know. I I mean, you corrected me last week. I genuinely thought Young Thug wants to collab with Gunna and make music with him. But now I think it's incre- he's trying to make it increasingly clear that he's mad at Gunna for snitching. For sure. For sure, for That's sure. That's crazy. Yeah. Because this was very direct. Like, no subs. Like, it was correct. Like, it was Stop direct. acting like we friends on the internet. I don't know. Saying you don't know a nigga when you know him is so diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes somebody will do one act that make you say, I don't I know. Don't, I don't know you. Great point. Like, we can have 15 years of friendship. Yeah. And you can do one thing where it's like, yo, I don't, I don't even know who you are. Yeah. Like, it, it's almost like when your partner disappoints you. <sighs> It's, mm. I don't I don't know who you like really that's how you moving that's you I, be I don't even know who you are I'm jaded I be waiting like that's how man. you know somebody is really really hurt yeah. when they give you the I don't even know who you I are even, I've, I've expected so much of you like I yeah. poured so much into you like damn cut. I'm really reflecting right now the tongue is a sword it's like yeah. I don't even know you yeah like you, when someone guy. backstabs you you look at them like or it's like is this who you've been the entire time, time? Yeah. so you're just Question yourself, like, wait, yeah. who who really is this? But Damn, you, I haven't felt that feeling in a long time. I never want to go back. Can Damn. you trust anybody named Sergio? <laughs> That is a good. He's hit, he Kitchens. asking the good questions. It's a good today. question, man. Because <laughs> who? You ever trusted what? Sergio? My first best friend name was Sergio. Where he, at Where now? he, at now? he used Who to thinks... shit on himself. Oh. <laughs> You're just exposing everybody today. <laughs> my last, my everybody last fight was with somebody named Sergio. Oh, I'm talking about like fists. Oh, they're not they're not having a good record right oh. now. Two bad Sergios. Sergios are tricky names because <laughs> what community do they belong to? Oh yeah, racially I ambiguous. I can tell you. Yeah, my the, the kid that I fought, he was Puerto Rican, white and Puerto Rican. The kid that I fought, he was black. And Gunna is black. Like uh, Sergio was really tricky. So think about the next time you befriend anybody <laughs> named Sergio. Which Sergios is up in the air. It's up in the air. Sergio's more on to you. We should have known. Jeff should have known. Jeff's like, my name is Jeff. I'm, I can't be Sergio. What is Sergio? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Like, Change your name. Gonna made Nasty Girl, though. He did make. How that song, girl? Yeah, nasty Girl. Uh, nasty, nasty Girl. girl. You know the joint? I don't. Word? We got to get you on them gunner tapes, I early do. gunner tapes. Oh. Them early gunner tapes. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still don't know it, but I see oh. you. I know why I don't know it. Nah, you just <laughs> told me why I didn't know crazy. it. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. But yeah, tr- trust anybody named Sergio. What's funny to me mm-hmm. in all of this is that Young Thug seems to be the person who can mend the rap civil war. Future was also spotted in the studio with Thug and Lil Baby that night. It's and funny you say that. Drake was reported the, one of the first people to fly out to see Young Thug mm-hmm. and gift him a million dollars. A million is pocket. Like, these are all the reports. And now there's reports that um, apparently, and this is a lot of this information is coming from DJ Academics, which I assume to be somewhat accurate. He's an insider in this space. Until it's debunked. He has mm-hmm. relationships with these people. With so Drake. this is where we're, we're getting this from. But right. it said that... Um, Drake gave a gifted young thug a million dollars. And then also that future was not aware that Kendrick Lamar was going to diss Drake on like that. 
Now, I do not believe that for one second. Because Just listen to the song. If an album future. is coming out, I'm, I'm going to assume that, you know, Future did hear it before it came out. But it seemed like there's a lot of backpedaling happening between Drake and Future and now Young Thug coming out. You know, a lot of camaraderie around mm-hmm. Young Thug and people wanting to support Young Thug. Yeah. And so we didn't know where some of these rappers kind of fell on this whole civil war between, you know, uh, Kendrick and Metro and Future. Mm-hmm. And then it was Drake. 21 Savage and all the people that supported each crew. Mm -hmm. This is going to get a little bit interesting because Young Thug seems to be able to bring everybody together. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. um, Academics is also reporting that I know Elliot Wilson came out and said that Drake and Future had a phone call and amended things. Mm -hmm. That's later has been debunked. But Academics is confirming that there's been talks with XO, which is the weekend's uh, uh, camp, and OVO. So Again, Future also falls in the middle of that uh, OVO XO type mm-hmm. thing. We just saw him in the studio with Young Thug, and we know how Thug feels about Drake, especially if you just put a main nose in your pocket. Mm-hmm. So it's, these next few months should be interesting to see how they unfold, mm-hmm. see who forgives who. I do think, um, well, I don't know why. I have a crazy feeling. I feel like Young Thug is going to drop something like next week type shit. I like, think it's I, coming. Yeah. I, I don't know why. Like I feel like it's coming. Um, I don't think he's going to wait long. Before and then, the new year? I th- yeah, I think something at least. And then I think he will be the piece mm-hmm. to mend the rap civil war, but only like the Atlanta and Drake sector. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think Kendrick and Drake will ever, like, Young Thug is not fixing that ever. No nah, one's fixing that. That's cool. But I mean, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, as Alex said, like, maybe they just hashed it out and now that's what they needed. And now they're going to come back together. Yeah. Everybody. And Thug was slated to release an album right before he got locked. I don't know if you guys remember this. It was an album work of his face and he was covered in blood. So I don't know if he takes some songs from there or if it's too old, put some new joints on there. Regardless, I'm happy for new music. I'm excited. Let's see what happens. Is, yeah. damn, I lost my train of thought. Mm-hmm. Is. For Thugger? Is it, or is, is it Sergio? Is it a Sergio question? No, it was a Young Thug question. Mark Thugger. this because I'm going to come back in unless y'all want to pick it up. But I did have a question. Okay. Mark. I'm trying to remember. Um, centered around Thug's release. Centered around his peers. Centered around his temperament. This this is something I'll mention. I don't want Young Thug to break probation. There we go. Thank you. Got you. Look is Young Thug My going God. to survive 15 years of probation? A lot know, of ESP yo. happening right now. Yeah. It's in the room. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I got you, bro. To answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah. I don't know if he know the... Did Brian still really run it down? Yeah. Is he going to last know. 15 hmm. years? Or pro- probation is off for anybody. But Anybody. then it's also Rapper. especially hard when you have yeah. unlimited access. Yeah. So we hope he does. Absolutely. But his so. first week out, oh, this. if the tweets are real, <laughs> if who he's hanging out in the studio is real, <laughs> then I don't know. I'm going to take the it. under on battle. 15 years. I don't know, but Young Thug <laughs> strikes me as someone who is like smart. Yeah. yeah. I don't me know too. if I'm wrong for thinking that because he no, did, no. you know, get caught and go to jail, but. Yeah. Smart I know, he, seems, he seems really smart, and I feel like he would not jeopardize, you know, his freedom. And I would hope that he holds it down for at least three to five years. Yeah. So they're able to come back to the table and go, you know what, let's either end the probation or reduce it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just hoping if he could just do a good... Because, th- hey, shout out to Wallow. Wallow just got his probation... Uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Expunged. Is Expunged. that the word? Yeah, Expunged. that's the word, yeah. And... I'm cool. He came out. He made his money. He stayed out of the way. Granted, Wallow circles, Savon, you're correct. I knew what you're going to say are very different mm-hmm. than Kendrick. I mean, than Young Thug circles. Yeah. But there's opportunity there. Just enjoy the money. And him not being in Atlanta should help. That I should mean, help. Should, should it? If should. he brings Atlanta to him. No, nah, Atlanta can't come to him. They felons. He's in Don't the forget. studio with all of Atlanta. No, no, no. I know, but there weren't any felons in that. Yeah, I know. I mean, but we not were like, no. If you can bring all of the hottest artists yeah. from Atlanta to mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. you don't need to be in Atlanta. So it's like, you're already kind of treading the right. waters. Just send the, the tracks. The T.I., right? The, they, the whole uh, T.I. situation. A lot of people was like highlighting that, um, you know, T.I.'s record and saying like, oh, should he even be in contact with somebody like a T.I.? Right? T.I. good. No, I, I think. You no, know, not you. I'm just thinking of that. Yeah. Again, um, and I'm only saying this because it's already been reported, but wow. we've seen it. Like these people are putting it out there. I'm not fucking doing any type of investigation. I'm just observing. And mm-hmm. my observation says, oh, he's been out a week. 
We've seen some subtweets towards a rat. I wouldn't even mention rat, at cheese, all. mouse, at, Mickey, at nothing. All. Like, I'm just going to let them be, even if it is true. Like, I just feel like, you know, it, it, it could it could be a little bit dicey. Yeah, I want to know what the terms are. And shout out to Offset. Can't... Okay. What are, so, what are you doing? Offset worked with Gunner. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of politics in Atlanta that I'm not too familiar with, but mm-hmm. I can imagine. We've spoken about Lil Baby and Offset having issues, uh, allegedly. And it seems like Offset kind of, when you do a song with somebody who is, you know, uh, alleged a rat, and y'all come from some of the similar circles, mm-hmm. um, that you, you may isolate yourself. And so I know Offset was going through some marital issues. I stand tall with black men that do cheat. Um, because I feel look, like they need you, support. Look at your United Front. What? Nah, they need support. Look at your group of niggas. They, that's mental illness when they do that. Ah, you I'm right. in support of Muffle. mental illness and helping I, I, that shit. Or okay, wait. So you're nah, in you support right. of mental illness. Salute. No, oh, support, like supporting yeah, them. Yeah, I'm in nah, support salute. of. Oh, supporting. Like people being there for them. I'm, okay. I'm there for Offset because if okay. you fumble Cardi B. Yeah. Not for, stuff, stuff you the, uh, with. not for nothing. I love Offset. He don't deserve this work. Wow. <laughs> not for nothing. I love Offset, but it definitely looked like he was riding waves. It looks, Gunner was hot. It looks away. So Fuck I just, you mean? He had a few records out. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know, it. but I don't know if that's all dependent on him just being solid with, yo, fuck the rest of Atlanta. And I don't know if you know or not, but Offset got some ops in Atlanta too. Yeah, he do. He's not the most loved throughout Atlanta. Which is why I'm saying, so you're not, we, the rumors are, he's not mm-hmm. the most beloved right. in Atlanta. And then you go team up and make music and side with somebody mm-hmm. who is alleged a rat. Right? Mm-hmm. It just is like, okay, he, he's going to need thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> That's all. Like, And I'm just speaking from the aspect, like, you lost Cardi B. It seems like she called him the worst person in the world, scum of the earth. Yeah. She has your kids and she hates you. She's saying it publicly. Like, you don't necessarily want to fumble that. We talked about Rihanna a little bit earlier. Yeah. ASAP Rocky is doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. House husband. <laughs> to the T. Got You and just got to give it up. He he's still happy. outside, too. Nah, for sure. It's, yeah. it's a cool little balance he got. But That's hey, the, the illest life. Defer to that billionaire wife, please. Yeah, yeah. And I, I and believe Cardi B is going to be the next one to be a billionaire. And they're also still going to be in the gym. As he should. He's, yo, he, my dog. As he should. You know, it's, it's not funny, but I just want to know and highlight that Offset's still in the gym and his arch nemesis, Stephon Diggs, is out for the season in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. I don't know what kind of bad juju or hex he got going on. I'm not going to put that on Offset as well, but very interesting to see. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on in Atlanta. A lot going, a lot going on. Lot going on. Lot Again, going. I'm a betting man. If anybody wants to take this bet, <laughs> please make sure you log on to fanduel.com, draftkings.com. <laughs> Take the under on Young Tug's <laughs> 15 years of probation, okay? Yo, he can't miss a, an appointment. <laughs> nothing. He can't get a ticket, a traffic violation. And nothing. He has, really? And he has to nothing. alert his probation officer for every single Every move. single day. Based on, mm-hmm. you got to think, in yeah. 15 years, I'll be 45. Wow. Okay? Yeah. How yeah. old will you guys be in 15 years? 43. Um, 38. Okay. Oh, all right. That's your industry. All right. My, oh, I'll be 32 then. If we, <laughs> if we just go. 15 years. Yeah. That's a gonna long be? time. And I do want to see Young Thug. You know, again, I'm not putting it out there. I think he can. Yeah. And hopefully he will. Damn. But, you know, that's that's a long time. It's and difficult. they say, they say a lot of people, probation, parole, all of these things, mm-hmm. it's designed for you to mm-hmm. go back. It's not 100%. put in your favor to manage it. And I can imagine that it's difficult and it's tough. And when you have that type of access, when you have one of the top artists in the game, when there's so many people relying on you, pulling on you, um, it, it could be tricky. So I hope that he, you know, doesn't move like Kodak Black. I hope he has better people in his corner than Kodak Black. And he's, you know, he makes the over. I hope he proves me wrong. I'll Just say that. get money, be with your girl and make music about your girl. And you're going to be I right, thug. I promise you, you're going to be I right, bro. Yeah. Right. And he's good enough to like make any type of music. He's like, great at it. He's not one of the people who needs to be boxing. In, like at all. Mm-hmm. now, if him and Lil Durk were in different situations, if you swapped them and Lil Durk was Ooh. the person who got out on probation, and they said, "Hey, you got 15 years, and you can only rap about this," Ooh. it's gonna be a tough time for Lil Durk. Mm-hmm. Lil Durk just got two new federal charges superseding indictment, which means that they added more charges and could probably add some more. Mm-hmm. Again, the more we find out, the more we'll let you guys know. 
be safe out there, y'all. Stay out the streets, man. For sure, for sure. I, mean, I want to leave y'all on a quick um, tidbit. Y'all familiar with Skip Bayless? I know, Alex. I'm very familiar. For sure. Reggie, Skip Bayless is a sports commentator. You know, you've heard of Skip. Yes. Is he the mean one? Yeah, a lot of people would say that. Does he hate on LeBron? Yes, he does. That's him. Shout out to LeBron who joined us today. If you were watching on YouTube, we have our in-house LeBroni. To bring us good luck. (laughs) But yes, Skip Bayless. Wait, he's not the one. Oh my God, I don't want to ruin my streak. But is he not the one? Is he the one that's friends with Lil Wayne? Yeah, yes. he is. <gasps> yeah, you used to do the show with Shannon Sharp. Hey, Come go. on, Reggie, you yeah. kill you two for two. Yeah, okay, I'm in my streak there. Yeah. Quit well on my head. Okay, what happened? What's him? up with Skip? He Skip retired, Davis. right? He's retired. No, he hasn't retired. Oh, he hasn't retired. Okay. He's been relieved of his duties, which is white man got fired. Fox. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, he got relieved from Fox, and they oh, always say that. Shit. And I want y'all to pay attention to this. Whenever a face. black head coach gets fired, they say, "Oh, he got fired." Yeah, but whenever it's a white head coach. He was relieved of his duties. It's really crazy. Well, they, Propaganda, they, whatever the case may be. They didn't say he was fired? Like, they didn't just say it? No. Nah. No, they, they didn't say he got fired. And I don't know, right? Like, I'm just going based off of what some of the other uh, industry insiders say. Right. Marcellus Wiley. Um, who did he do the interview with when I was really... Oh, Dan Lebitard. And Dan Lebitard is somebody who worked in ESP, sports journalist, based in Miami for a really, 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 really long time. The beautiful thing about current media is that we get to see the media hold the media accountable. Mm-hmm. Right, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcellus Wiley, a uh, former NFL yeah. player, yeah. ESPN personality, yeah. uh, Columbia educated, Ivy League educated, has a really, really done a really, really great job for himself during his career and post the NFL. He reports on some of these things. Uh, but Dan Lebertard interviewed Skip Bayless. Oh, I did see that. Did you around. really? Yeah, I did. Dan oh. Lebertard and uh, Marce- um, what's it? Wiley? Marcellus, Marcellus Riley. Riley. Yeah, Wiley. they have been very vocal about how they feel about ESPN in the last yeah. few years. And I, I love this era of media that we're in where media is holding media accountable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's really prominent in sports. Uh-huh. Um, Cam Newton. Cam Newton is also Fourth somebody. Yeah. Like, um, it's really prominent in sports. And I think in entertainment and hip hop, it's becoming a trend. Like, we have some kind of sub channels who report on it but i think the accountability levels is something that i'm really interested in but when it comes to skip bayless there was a really really dope interview ladies i'm sorry if i'm gonna lose you on this part because i'm talking about sports journalism and shit y'all may not care about but there was an interesting tidbit in that story first off somebody like a skip bayless or Stephen a smith anybody who's just on network tv going back to industry plants they kind of just plant these really talented people in front of us and we just accept them so if you turn on channel two or Fox or CNN, whatever it is, you'll see a news anchor. You'll know nothing about that news anchor, but they were placed there for a reason because they're really good at their job and they can report on the news and they're quick on their feet. For whatever reason, we just get, they get placed in these positions and we just accept them because that's what we've been programmed to do. Sports analysis have been the same, right? Skip Bayless was one of those reporters who worked his way in the TV, and we just grown to know who Skip Bayless is, but we don't really know who these people are. Like, we don't. So it was really fascinating and really cool to see um, Skip Bayless be interviewed by Dan Lebertard, journalist again. And learning about Skip, Dan Lebertard, he asked about his upbringing, right? Like, again, I've watched Skip most of my life, maybe 15, 20 years I've seen Skip on ESPN and Fox. Yeah. Um, I didn't know Skip Bayless had parents who were alcoholics. I didn't know Skip Bayless um, was basically raised by a black woman um, who was almost like a nanny to his family. I knew and it. he 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 says he gained a lot of respect for you know, the black plight and, and just the black experience through this woman. Um, something again, I just I just didn't know. Um, I just didn't know his story or his background. But in this interview with Dan Levitard, Skip kind of gave some insight to who he is and why he is. And the one thing I wanted to bring to this podcast is what he said to his current partner. I don't know if they're married, but I know they've been together for a really long time. Um, on a on their very first date, Skip told his partner, hey, no matter where this goes between you and I, you are always going to come second. You will never be the main priority in my life because my life's work, my life's passion has been dedicated to my work. 
sports, reporting on sports, being in media. Skip is 70 years old. He has millions in the bank. He's accomplished pretty much anything that you can accomplish in his position. He's still like, hey, I'm not retired. Mm-hmm. Like he makes it known. I don't ever want to retire. But I just found it interesting. And I wanted to just get your perspective on that. If somebody were to tell you, no matter what, no matter how deeply you love me, no matter how deeply I love you, mm-hmm. I'm going to be open, honest, and transparent with you and let you know, you will never be the first priority in my life. How do you feel about that? I feel like it is very predictable how I feel about that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not. Right I, I mean, you don't absolutely know. not. No, that's just, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know him like this i don't i know he doesn't care about me i don't care about him so this is not a shot to skip but like that is not the type of man for me that is not the type of man i could ever picture myself with like for me it's like you i admire career oriented people obviously career driven that's literally how you provide for your family i respect that but it's like that does not come above real life people in your life like your parents me the the mother of your future children like no like that matters to me like family and real life people your relationships is like up here for me and your career is like here like for me if my husband was like not super career obsessed like i would not mind like it's like yeah let's focus on keeping our friendships alive spending time with our kids like that i feel like when you're old and gray like what are you gonna do brag about your career like no like i don't give a fuck Do do you respect his honesty though for sure. I, res- I respect it, but it's like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't care about his answer. Like, Damn. why do I have to respect it? Like, and just, I that I led with like, oh, I don't even know. Skip. Like, we, like, I don't, he doesn't care about my opinion about him. So it's like, but if this were someone that I was dating and he said that to me, I'll be like, okay, have a nice life. Like, that is just not, <laughs> just our, moral, our morals do not align. Like, yeah. I, my parents, like, they definitely put real life first above their careers and just, emphasize how important like family is like all that stuff like i don't know i just don't like the whole my career is everything to me i went through that actually like when i was like in my mid-20s i had like an identity crisis i looked at my instagram i was like every picture is like about my job like i don't care anymore like who cares about standing next to the celebrity like i don't care like i want people to love me for me that's why i rebrand a little bit (laughs) But, but not really like i'm just i was just like let me stop like when I introduce myself to people, like, I don't want my job to be the first thing, like, my identity is. So, yeah. I don't know, Skip. I know Skip probably, he's ha- I don't know if he, he's probably happy with the decisions he made, but that's just, like, not for me at all. Two questions. Is Skip still with her? Yes. Okay. Well, that leads me to my next point. I think everybody is different, and I completely respect where Reggie is coming from. And it makes the most sense, especially for a person who is looking for a life partner for essentially love being the primary thing and the driving factor. However, I'll say this. Low maintenance people might be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's all like what yeah. we picture out of like like if he yeah. if his life dream is to be like the president of I don't know ESPN whatever like mm-hmm. president of ESPN like that brings him so much happiness then mm-hmm. of course I respect it. But for me that's not what my idea of happiness is. So right. that's why we're so different, you know. Exactly, right. Like if a person knows that I'm either low maintenance or I'm not. That's how I'd want them to approach me. So if you know I'm a low maintenance person, okay, maybe you show me how you further incorporate me on a day to day basis, week to week basis, etc. But if I know, like, let's say I'm Skip and I tell somebody that, if I know that person is not low maintenance, I would never try that. I would just understand that, hey, it's just gonna have to be at dating, and this probably won't go any further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, t- so for me, there's another question I'd have to ask, like. I would probably ask, okay, what does it look like for you to love me? Like, how do I know I'm loved by you? Because I think there's more than one way to love somebody. It's not... Different love languages. Yeah. If if someone tells me, hey, like, if I was single and somebody told me, hey, like, you know, you're not going to be number one, you'd be number two. I still want to know, okay, like, to love me, like, what does that look like for you? Just so I know I'm not out here just uh, being unloved by the person that I care about. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. And mm-hmm. it's like, I can't ask if this, so I don't know, like, where this is going to go. But, like, to me, when I hear that, though, like, when we get older, like, if you mean that you're putting your job above me, like, what if I, I'm your wife and we have kids and, like, I'm, like, in the hospital or something and I need you? Yeah. And you're like, sorry, you, I told you my career comes first. He goes off to a business trip. Like, how, is that not Dang. crazy? No. Sort of crazy. Like, you you want to know what it is, Reggie? I feel like we've seen, like, occurrences of people kind of juggling the both. 
Like, great example. We talked about LeBron. He's right next to us right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> LeBron is Mr. <laughs> family. Yeah, yeah. Miss, he's also been very committed to the bas- to basketball. For sure. Mm-hmm. So much so that he still hasn't retired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or we can kick it to Tom Brady. Oh, Giselle was like, hey, <laughs> hey. You got one more. Retire. You got one more. Let's get this family going. Tom said, nah. And because she is the type of person she is, she's now having another child with another person. So mm. I don't know. I just feel like everybody's it's the, different. The trainer. It, it's just pain. That's pain. But when I see people like LeBron That's kill it. Pain. He found like the right woman Perfect. to accept that lifestyle. Exactly. You know? I'm so glad you that's mentioned Le- I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned LeBron because yeah. the common denominator between both of their stories is the relationship that they had or lack thereof with their fathers. Mm. <gasps> LeBron James has dedicated himself to being a great father because he didn't have a father growing up. Yeah. That's just, you know, a part of his story. That's some of the things that he said. And you can see it in just how he got his son on the team, right? <laughs> like he's going to do each and everything to be that father to all of his kids. And from what we see, from what we know, he is a you know phenomenal father. Mm-hmm. Skip Bayless, again, we don't know these news anchors, these sports analysts, these sports journalists. We know their opinions. We know their ability to report. But we're mm-hmm. actually getting to the point in media, in sports media specifically, where we're starting to kind of learn who the people are of this. So with Skip... His desire to win, his desire of never feeling like his 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 winning is is quenched in a way, right? Right. Is because he didn't get the approval or the acknowledgement or the acceptance from his father. And as a 70-year-old man, that still kind of sticks with him where it started out as, hey, I'm really good at this writing journalism stuff. Because I wasn't good at sports. And he admits to not being really good at sports and all of that stuff. It's a really insightful interview. If you're into sports media the way that I am, please go check it out. But he's like, I just, at the core of it, I wanted my dad, I wanted my father to just say, yo, good job. And that's what kind of stemmed from, and wow, this is a theme of just fatherhood and movies and all of that kind of stuff. I didn't even correlate that. Yeah. But that was the theme so of Skip Bayless, or that was the root of Skip Bayless, like wanting to be at the top of his Career. profession yeah. no matter what. And to the point now, he got married in 2016. He has no kids. And he's one of those people who's like, yo. You said this nigga 70? He's 70. Yeah. And and uh, he, he, he stood on business. He, he stood on business when it came to that. <laughs> he, he hasn't had kids. And a part of him not having kids, again, in this interview, is he's like, I am too selfish. At 70, though, you got to let it go. So <laughs> you got to just talk to your father from heaven or something. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yo. I mean, maybe you gotta he, let that go. he says, like, oh, my career comes first. My wife comes second because, like, that's kind of the main thing he lives for. Yeah, but like, see, it's easy to say that in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s. Real talk. 50s. Fit, you about to get it off. I was about to get it off. Because he's 70. Yeah, I ain't, but I wanted to stop right there. But for the most part, yeah. people are considered relatively young in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, for sure, for sure. right? So that's easy to say. Man, when your, your shit not working the same, man, <laughs> when, when you using your wife's insurance because she got better insurance, well, I'm not in Skip's case, of course, but I'm just, I, yeah, nah, he got the best of the best. I'm just saying, you reach a certain age where you're like, okay. These were my sentiments 30 years ago, 40 years ago, however long it was. But fam, I got about <laughs> 10, 15 more in a, in a can. Yeah. Let's change. It's okay. It's okay, Skip. But that was oh actually very insightful. I want to go watch it now. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Go check that out. Oh my God. Those journalist interviews are so great. Because, oh my God. That's so crazy that you said that. All day I was watching <laughs> Trevor Noah interviews. Shout out to Trevor Noah. He has such a crazy life like he's so insightful he's done so much therapy like just knows so many terms to put to what these behavioral issues are like oh my god i highly recommend and also i watched like taylor rooks interviews not the interview she does with athletes but about her life like Fire. guys don't sleep on the journalist interviews i'm glad Saman brought this up like they're it really it, a lot goes into like why they are the way they are i yeah. love the media sitting down with the media yeah, yeah. even um Torre, he sat down with vlad dj vlad and again, I know he's very polarizing, Vlad, but one thing I can stand on is like some of his work is pretty insightful. Um, I think he has a lot of weird ways about him. Definitely some weird he ways. He has a lot of weird ways about him if you listen and, you know, whatever the case may be. But again, just speaking from a, a work standpoint uh, and somebody like a Torre um, who has a ton of stories and gems in this, especially like the quote unquote golden era hip hop. 
right? right? He got stories with Jay-Z and Diddy. Like when these people were accessible, he was one of the few people who had access. So to see him, you know, uh, reflect on his career. And again, going back to the Skip Baylesses and some of the other folks that are just in the media that we get to hear from, you know, I really like too, and this is like the weird Savon tangent. I'm so, so sorry. But even Michelle Beadle. Oh, um, Michelle Beadle. She's dope too. Uh, she was on ESPN. Yes. Uh, years ago. She's now doing a show with FanDuel. She recently slipped up and said, nigga. Oh, yeah, she did. I saw nah, that. She didn't slip up. Black? Nah, she nah, did. Nah, she's she's that was a slip. Nah, she's white? Yeah, she's white. white. Right? It was a, nah. it was a she said that shit normal. Yeah. Nah, it was a slip up, bro. Nah, nah that she was could too tell fluid. She get it off when the <laughs> camera's yeah. on. Yeah. If, if, it, if it was like a slip up, yeah. That probably means she uses like behind yeah. closed doors. I'm trying to tell you, that you was like a so? young thug judge. Why you heard her just, too? Wait, what was a con? Like, why did she say it? Here's listen, a listen. Michael Porter Jr. recently said, "Oh, I don't like this." That if the niggas, that the if the niggas, niggas she said that shit better than me. Wait, wait, hold on, let's, let's run it back. Let's run it back because she's talking about the Denver <laughs> nuggets. Nuggets, all right. Oh, all right. Michael Porter Jr. recently said, "Oh, I don't like this." That if the niggas, the Nuggets. Ooh. Don't, ooh. She said that shit better than me. Oh, I thought you meant she was saying pick up the team. Lou, are you buying that this is the last dance for the Look at Lou Will. Look at Lou Will. Yeah, I'm buying. Nuggets. I'm buying. Bina, you're going to be in trouble today. Yes, yes, you are. Let's just get it one more time for the jury. All right? You could have edited that. Michael Porter Jr. recently said, oh, I don't like this. That if the niggas, the Nuggets. Oh. Yeah. That was tough, Michelle. Michelle. Yo, speaking of, there's one of the lawyers or the judge in the Young Thug. Yeah. Case, that, she yep. also said she was reciting lyrics and she she said nigga yes she did or niggas but she said it just like me <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that's yeah. fluent nigga. I'm just saying I enjoy <laughs> hearing these media people that we've grown up I can't wait for us to like get to know the newscasters the people who are reporting on like the election those news anchors I can't wait for them to like actually step in front of the cameras and do interviews like Gail King fine, too like Gail King mm. I want to know Gail King's story. You could probably find There's it. There's definitely... Yeah, you could probably find that. Same a lot, I don't probably. know. Maybe <laughs> in print up. media, I want to hear her sit down with somebody yeah. and give it up. I'm sure yeah. this is she where I'm has from. Done that. She has such a long career, yeah. I feel like. I don't know. I'm going to look for it. That would be really interesting. I'd love to hear that be- one too. Yeah. Before I say no, it doesn't exist, I want to know. Like, who, who... Because all of them are dying. Wait, what? <laughs> They're getting old. The the news anchors that nah. were like prominent. Barbara Walters hurt me, yo. Mm. Gone. That shit hurt me. I ain't what's, going. What's her? Not like, Barbara. Where'd she come from? <laughs> was her dad an alcoholic like Skips? <laughs> Say for I don't. I These are things. Oh, no. no pun you intended. You can find Barbara Walters' uh, uh, background. I, I need bring to know. In. Yeah, you can find that. You can I need to know. That. Yeah. Is there anything else I, I wanted to get know. off your chest? Wait, chair? did you answer the question of, of what, what Skip said? Like the would you ever tell your wife that your job comes comes first and she comes second? I've told that to people before. No, but like you're the one you're No. What I have Would you a... say that to your wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. Person I'm dating, sure. Yeah. My wife. <laughs> the person I'm dating is sure. Sure, yeah, because then she can make a decision. Yeah, right. But it's yeah, messed yeah. up because the person that like if i'm dating it's like we're gonna get there but what kind of mm-hmm. date know we doing i don't date to date bro you know me you've known me for a very long <laughs> no, time I'm just saying, to like, find a wife yeah you know like nah, for sure, for how sure. we start the show i could play the song <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i can throw I, yo no no yo i can no, throw it back the point i was trying to make is are we dating exclusively is it, right yeah, yeah okay. like a serious okay. girlfriend would right. you tell her That's my career mean. comes first no cause then if it's serious okay maybe we could really go get married yeah, yeah, but yeah. We just don't change your answer just cause of my answer Fact, no, 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 no 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 backtracking Alex backtracking I'm Come thinking on. about how my wife would curse me out fuck y'all what I don't think I would ever say that to somebody I love and they gonna be like okay Alex mm-hmm. like what the fuck nah even Somewhere. if I do feel that way I would have to change to your wife that's forever so it's work <laughs> forever. Look at, forever. Look at Skip Bayless. So it's his job. He's seventy yeah, years old. He's still about, going. Because <sighs> see, I, I differ a little bit, right? And Pete, not to cut you off. Yeah. If I'm comfortable, if I got money in my pocket, if I'm doing well in my field, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I don't need to eclipse something so unreachable just to say that I put it first. Like nah. And a lot of these cats be comfortable and still search for more in the work. It's like, dog, you already good. If I'm good, I, I ain't worried about it. Okay. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, 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 the reason why it stuck out to me is because 
I thought it was commendable for him to just be that honest. Like that real. Yeah. yeah. For him to actually sit with himself, know that about himself yeah. and not allow society's norms to be mm-hmm. like, oh, you got to concede to the pressure of, hey, no, no. He's like, this is who I am. This is what it is. I really, really love you. I really want to be with you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this is more. what fuels me. This is where, mm-hmm. where I'm at. And you will never come first. And I think for- That any- career can't ride you, though. I mean, so at, at some point, <laughs> at some point it can. She's like, not wrong. I'm, I'm trying to tell you that career can't do that trick wrong. of her mouth the way she do it. But also, there's women. You know the one. There's a lot. There's probably a lot of women who would not mind this. They really want a man that puts his career. For, there's probably women. Oh out yeah, there. for yeah. sure. Like I said, everyone is different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone is low maintenance or high maintenance. Yeah. So it speaks to that. Yeah, they yeah. want that provider man that's obsessed with his career and mm-hmm. more power to you. I used to date a girl. She's like, oh my God, I think it's so sexy. You just be busy as fuck all the time. <laughs> I said, oh yeah. And just kept being busy. Watch me get more busy. And then just busy. kept ignoring her. <laughs> he bought a studio. <laughs> he said, watch this. Watch this. Stephen that is crazy. A, Stephen A also, I think he was on Joe's pod uh, at one point. Uh-huh. And his own, he's also mentioned that his job is really important to him and, you know, he puts it first as well. Nah, Does he, he have cold. a wife? Does he have a wife? No, nah, nah, he, he, has, he, has he has a girlfriend. He cold-blooded, though. Yeah. Reggie, he tell him, like, yo, if you post us on the internet, it's clip. the relationship is clip. It's over. What? He one of those. He don't like that. Yeah. He doesn't want to love his queen out loud? Nah. nah. He likes his privacy. In private. He want to love it in private, yo. Yeah. It's like when they tell you don't talk about like politics or religion, the things that we talk about on the pod. Hey, we did it once. You know what I'm saying? I'll only, do yeah. it. I'll only do it in the next four years, okay? okay. Got it. That's I'm super not mad valid. at that, man. Anything valid. else, y'all, y'all, y'all cool. We made it. I feel like these cool. two hour episodes, somebody got mad at us because we didn't continue our episode last week when it was like two hours plus. Oh, shit. It's like you guys were just getting started. What? Oh. Why didn't you keep going? Two hours in? I mean, I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Well, salute to y'all, man. We love y'all. He said we just started cooking at two hours but oh, if shit. you're interested that means we did bad. in more i know right <laughs> maybe that was a backhanded compliment but if you are interested in more uh content like we said at the top of this episode please head over to our patreon we appreciate y'all we really go kind of deep you know into the content and into the conversations mm-hmm. if you're this far into the podcast there's no reason you are subscribed like apple spotify youtube wherever it is that you tap in with us we appreciate you we thank you um yeah i oh, think that's that's it. what happened i got one last thing to say Go for what's it. up here? hey listen box top education remember that in the cereal box yeah for sure that was all a lie bro what one, do you mean it was you wonder why it was all a lie cereal now is the most unhealthiest thing to have as an adult and as a kid yeah, yeah so, it's, it's just so, corn flour and sugar and mad other like mad other ingredients so imagine as a kid you're eating that every morning mm-hmm. now you know we're adults now got different you know blood we health. need protein we in need the morning proteins a lot that of that was really on your heart a, a lot was. of stuff a lot you of stuff that that we deal with now as adults came from back yo bro milk even cow's milk is the worst thing for you i'm not gonna lie it bro is. i ain't had cereal in we in 2024 i probably haven't had cereal in like five years same. I don't eat cereal either. That's yeah. crazy. Five but also, situation. I give my parents grace, especially my mom being an immigrant. She was, that was just told, you know. Yeah. She she didn't know any better. Like she was like, oh, this is what the American kids are eating. Right. So it's I'm breakfast. not I'm not mad at her. So yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. But yeah, she was doing the best she could. Thank you for that help. That's on all DPA. I have to say. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that no, I'm passionate crazy. about certain certain things like this. But yeah, there's yeah. a lot of stuff that happened nowadays that you think of as an adult. It's like, wait a minute. This wasn't right. The young process. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. Yeah. With that being said, it's the Need to Know Podcast. What you need to know, when you need to know on the Need to Know Podcast. We will be back again next week. Maybe. I don't know. I'm tired. Nah, we will. <laughs> I'm numb. <laughs> numb. I'm yeah. numb to the shit. I can't believe I don't know. You said that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, We're going to be back. Check nope. in. Yep. No more crying on pods. Gang. Gang. What's going on, Need to Know Podcast family? You are about to tap into our Patreon. We promised y'all. We told y'all. We've been giving it up crazy over there. Y'all about to get a snippet. Uh, Please do not judge me. Don't judge us. Don't judge all of us. Yeah, because we really give it up over there. I've been loving the episodes that we've been doing. I have. I have. We've been doing them in the comfort of our homes, but the content Mm -hmm. has still been as if we're in the studio. Very intimate. Yeah. For for sure. For sure. 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 And uh, if you enjoy what you're listening to, if you're what you're about to hear, that is available in the description below. So please make sure y'all click there, tap, sign up. We are giving y'all extra episodes every single week. We are hey. not missing any weeks. That's two episodes mm-hmm. a week from the Needs to Know podcast. I'm going to shut the fuck up because I know y'all really want to hear this content. So please make sure y'all tap in. We hope y'all enjoy. Start y'all week off. Again, that's every single Monday. Y'all are getting new episodes. Alex, Reggie, how y'all feel? Feeling great. Patreon.com mm-hmm. slash Needs to Know podcast. Meet you over there.
y'all saw the stream Kodak on Kai Sinat, Kai Sinat. A few weeks ago. Yeah, Kai Sinat's Mafia Thon Subathon, which is he does it once a year, and I guess he does it to accumulate the most amount of subs throughout the streaming community. And of course, he likes to bl- bring a plethora of guests. I think as of recently, he brought on Quavo, he brought on Glorilla, um, some other notable people that I can't remember at this current moment. But Kodak Black was one of the people. And for years, we kind of know Kodak Black hasn't had the easiest uh, life, even though, of course, he's identifiable, he's rich, people know that he's famous. He seems to be struggling with some things, right, Savon? Yeah, it looks like, I mean, it doesn't look like he is struggling with drugs, yeah. uh, abusing drugs. And I just say he's going to die because we've seen this story before. And if he doesn't change, if he doesn't get the help, if he's not surrounding himself by better people, I feel like it's a broken record because we see so many of our artists go through this shit so publicly. Mm-hmm. And to see yeah. him be on a live stream, <clears throat> like, you know how on the previous Patreon episode, I said, I take my Sundays to protect me from me. Right. Right. Like, you have to do certain things to protect yourself from yourself. But when you're not able to protect yourself, you need people around you that are going to protect you. And so even if he is struggling, which we've seen him struggle publicly with these drugs, with these Percocets and all the other things that he's been doing, um, there needs to be somebody who could potentially protect you and say, you know what? He's struggling. He's going through it. Maybe I can't get him to stop, but I'm not going to allow him to get on the biggest stream in the world's platform and continue to display his drug abuse for everyone to see. You know what the like, problem is, bro? I don't think he has um the a corporate team around him. I want to be very specific mm-hmm. in the words I'm using. You know, a lot of the times when you have these rap imprints that have these entourages, you have your team that's with the label, right? Mm-hmm. And then you'll have the team, it's really your homeboys. <laughs> like the niggas you kicking it with every other day, every day, et cetera. And I don't think he has that corporate team anymore. Uh, even his last releases don't, seem to have the most amount of backing and support um it's funny he just dropped an album probably about a week ago he had no features on it but you want to know what's interesting say going if you listen to the album you wouldn't even know that the dude is on drugs and it's fucking my head up because it's like how is he able to go inside the studio and just know when to punch in i guess it's sort of like autopilot for him now right he's on autopilot he knows exactly where to punch it. Yeah, he knows where to punch in the verse, the hook. And it doesn't seem like a guy is slurring his words. You can hear what he's saying. But it seems as if the moment he leaves the booth, the addiction continues and his verbiage just deteriorates. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes those drugs enhance people's ability. Right. Um, we see it all the time. Like a lot of your favorite artists or people's favorite artists, once they get sober, the music just don't hit the same. The art just doesn't hit the same. Like, they had lightning in the bottle while they were doing all these drugs. I know Kid Cudi, he's one of the artists where people are like, yo, when he was on drugs, it was better. I know Eminem, when he was on drugs, the shit was fire. Get it's like when you acid. And this is what I'm saying. Just Chance the Rapper. That, yeah. Like, that, that those double. drugs, future. sometimes, future, Dude. like, Dude. It's, it's future sometimes good. it just helps. Sometimes it just enhances the product. So right. I don't expect us to really be able to determine what a drug addict sounds like through his music. Yeah. Even though they're telling it to us at certain times. But when you're live streaming, right, there is, it's not a controlled environment. Like on the red carpet at award shows, you may see people drunk, you may see people high, but it's a controlled environment. There's right. producers, there's showrunners, there's people who's always going to make sure the show is always going to go on. Even if we got to pivot on the blink of a dime, we will do it. On a live stream that's not curated, that is literally live, right? Like there is no cut, edit, let's redo this, take. It's none of that. It's you, the camera, and in Kai Sinat's case, millions of people watching you <laughs> during that time. So for somebody on his team, and again, I don't expect somebody to get him to just stop drugs, right? That's his vice. Those are his demons. That's his battle. Yeah. He's going to get through that. His team, hopefully he can get through that. But what I do expect is for somebody that loves you or is around you to at least not exploit you or allow you mm-hmm. to put yourself 
on the biggest stream on a live in the stream world, yeah on a live stream this nigga was popping percocets throwing it in the air and catching it yeah was, like a uh, star bird, like a skill yeah, like a little skill like a little tick he was doing that you was know how they say like doing tricks on a dick he was doing <laughs> tricks on the pit like i yeah. never seen no shit like this in my life you know yeah, what I mean? it was definitely uncomfortable yeah. yeah but i don't know he's why gonna die. It, no, i don't know yeah that, because of because we don't know like his situation what like alex was saying like we don't know if he has a corporate team anymore i don't know maybe he does i don't know but what this made me think of it's kind of random and not related but it kind of is it made me think of tyla her stream with kai sanat like you could tell that was not like a casual like oh text kai let me pull up it was like the record label was like hey let's exactly. do this for 30 minutes because tyla right. the reason why she's so successful like is because she has a real team like a yeah. marketing team an a and r team the label her own creative people who make her music which is why her music sounds authentic to her her culture like she has a real team and it seems like artists like kodak they don't have that foundation anymore and it's, it's and, sad because you need that team and yeah you're right and if i'm independent um i think kodak is independent now he just doesn't have the same backing he had before with atlantic and i know that i just put out an album like I, how i just mentioned Kai Sanat stream, maybe to not only Kodak, but his team that he's working with, that probably makes a lot of sense, right? Like, we just put out a project. Let's go out to promote it. But to your, to your point, man, you got to know the, the limitations of who you're dealing with, man, especially when you're dealing with him on a day-to-day -day basis. It should be no reason why you throwing perks in the air and catching them in your mouth. That's, that's an addiction. <laughs> Damn, and to feel so bad. comfortable That's like it, it, it's almost like um with the diddy situation with cassie right? right we got to see the video and it's like holy shit this man did this in a hotel yeah. in a public hallway lobby elevator whatever like imagine what he was doing behind closed doors that's right? what's so scary about it like, if kodak is popping these shits on a live stream and him and kai and I, i'm gonna assume i don't know I'm going to assume they're not bros like that. They're not best nah. friends. They're not kicking it every day. Nah. So for you to not only do that on camera, you know you're being recorded and around somebody who's not really a man like that. Can you imagine what he's doing when he goes home and there's nobody else around but for the real. people who enable him? Yeah. Right? Like, Probably worse. That is what's really wild to me. And that's why, again, I'm not putting that out there. I don't want that to happen to him. Yeah. But we've seen this story before. Like He is on a fast track of to death. Like, did y'all watch the Juice World documentary a few years ago on Max? HBO? I remember. I remember. That was a lot. I wasn't really a Juice World fan like that. I knew his impact. I think his music was re really good. It connected with a lot of people. Super talented. Yeah. Um, but it, it it was always eerie because he glorified drug use. But then when they did this documentary, um, you could see just how bad the drug use was and how much it was affecting his his life, his family. He was in open drug like it was openly known he was a drug addict yeah his girl at the time like he just had a bunch of enablers around him and to know that they are from the same era right they're peers in the space same age same targeted group whatever the case may be came out around the same time to see that you have all of these examples of people who have died we just had a rich homie this year rest in peace yeah. like you know what your end the outcome is going to be at this point and so that's the only reason why I'm like, oh, yeah, he, I, I, I'm yeah. not going to be surprised if we wake up one day and we see Rest in Peace, Kodak Black. You want, also, Damn. he's exhibiting fiend behavior, the twitching, talking over his words, not being uh, clear, being difficult to understand, the twitching. It's like, dog, you're literally in your 20s, man. How do you expect mm -hmm. to still be here for your 30s and your 40s? And to your point, I, I hope we don't wake up to a rest in peace, Kodak Black. But we've seen this story before. It's like, mm -hmm. if you're not going to listen to nobody, how do you change this? I remember when he got locked a few years back and he came back home and he got sober. And that was good to see. To see him sober to this now, you can clearly see that he has not taken his health seriously yeah. since he's like he's back battling home. with it. Yeah, no, for real. I, you know what? I don't like prison for anyone, but rehabilitation, that's the word I'll use. Rehabilitation is important for people who have actually gone through things. Now, I don't mean rehabilitation should mean jail for everyone. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if that's rehab, et cetera, but he mm -hmm. needs to have an extended period of time away from all of this. And it's, I guess it's tough when this is how you make music. 
and music ain't making a bunch of money. So you got to shake and move. You got to do appearances. Yeah. You got to do appearances. You got to do shows. You have to be visible. So it's tough. I think, I think it's a perfect storm and it's a perfect excuse for artists like Kodak who were really hot at some point, um, who was at the top of the world, had all the support from the labels, um, had the social buzz, was accepted sociably. Like there was a time where it was Kodak, it was Lil Baby, it was Gunna. It was all of these guys that was looked at as like the next wave of carrying the torch from the previous generations. And to know that he probably isn't getting the support that he's used to getting, he may not be as hot as he once was. Um, that transition is it creates the perfect storm for an enabler or for somebody who's struggling with drugs or depression. Yeah. Depression, all yeah. of these things. It just for makes sure. it worse because you're used to being a man. You're used to having the money. You're used to booking all of these shows. You used to being able to sell out certain things. And like if Kodak Black continues to go in this path, right? Again, there's only two outcomes. There's only two broke and dead, dead or broke, right? Like this path. It doesn't mean he can't redirect. It doesn't mean he can't change it. He doesn't has mean he to can't get the point. help, right? But like the point that he is at, he, th- this does not look good. It does not feel good. And we're going to look at Kai's stream if something does happen to Kodak mm-hmm. and, and, and look at this and be like, why didn't we talk about this more? 